A Gear 6 announcement is allegedly on the way, and in light of the recent news from another Xbox title using the Unreal 5 engine, I can't help but say that I have a lot of questions. Gears of War is considered to be one of the flagship IPs of the Xbox platform, and With how much has changed for Xbox just this year in 2024, will Gears have a new trajectory as a game? Now, I have my own theory about all the rumors about the Gears collection and why it just hasn't shown up yet. And if that theory turns out to be true, it could play a pretty big role in how Gears 6 launches and what platforms it would launch on. Now, I even took to Twitter. I wanted to see what folks would want from a Gears of War 6. And I asked the question, you know, the dreaded question, do you think this will be 30 FPS on console? And the feedback was interesting, just given how much I was told about Hellblade 2 and Unreal 5 and all the great lighting and all the great graphics and why I shouldn't be expecting 60 FPS from that game. Given the rumors about how crazy Gear 6 is, allegedly shaping up to be I'm worried that we may be headed to another 30 FPS capped console game and at this point I'm I'm not really sure why anybody would be confident in a first party studio from Xbox giving you performance mode it hasn't really been consistent it doesn't seem to be a priority and I have theories about why that's happening and how that's happening it may have to do with parity we're going to get into all that and I got feedback from somebody at Digital Foundry who is very confident that this game will be 60 FPS so now I open up the video with sort of an opening monologue it's a longer video you're like oh my gosh why is this video two hours long well this is a live stream you may be watching the past broadcast if you want to make sure you're here for the live shows and the discussion make sure you hit subscribe and the bell button so you don't miss out on the content also consider clicking join and pick the six dollar member tier that will get you into the extra shows and content that we do as well According to a recent insider, a Gear 6 announcement is likely headed our way this summer, and apparently we are not ready, okay? Now, forgive me for sounding a bit skeptical, but after the last four years of Xbox First Party Studios and the recent Hellblade 2 30 FPS announcement, I have more questions about Gears of War 6 than I do excitement. Now, primarily because I'm just hesitant to get excited about anything coming from Xbox Game Studios right now. Hellblade 2 was my most anticipated game of the year. If you didn't see my coverage of that, I got pretty passionate. I'm not happy with how that's shaping out because it just is another indictment of the Xbox Series X. Now, I thought Gears 5 was a great installment in the Gears franchise, and I thought it really took things forward. Now, some people took issue with like the open world i love that i love that it wasn't just a constant flow of set pieces at the end it sort of turned into that but i still gave the game high marks and high praise i really liked it i think it's actually hard to do that with a game that's been around for such a long time right i remember bailing on gears of war 4 for that very reason i just sort of said to myself you know i've kind of played this game before it just felt a little too familiar and gears Five to me, I really enjoyed completing it. It felt like a fresh and an evolutionary step for the IP. Now, obviously, I'm hoping that Gear 6 can pick up where Gears 5 sort of started with sort of changing the way the game felt, making it feel a little bit bigger, and even using Jack to, you know, change the flow of combat. I think a great place to start and just give you guys a quick backstory on what the Coalition has been doing. Before we get into some of my questions about what is going to happen with this game, is it going to be multi-plat and all of that? I also want to look at the insider information that we're getting about Gears 6, and then I can sort of give you my position on that, which is basically just a litany of questions, right? <laughs> that now that we've sort of seen things and the, the Hellblade 2 news, you know, I'm going to also make some predictions about this, where it might end up, and I think many are hoping and expecting for, you know, just based on the feedback that I received on Twitter. So first, the backstory. In May of 2021, the Coalition announced they would be moving to UE5, and they said this in their official blog post. They said, Gears of War has always been at the front of Unreal Engine development. As a breakout 720p title for the Xbox 360, through last year's 120 FPS multiplayer update for the Series X and We are excited to continue that tradition by developing on UE5 for multiple new projects in the coming years. So you can see, like, this could be good news. You're like, oh, they're switching to UE5. They sort of want to continue to push things forward with Gear 6. They see that, you know, being something they've continued to do with Unreal. But again, Hellblade 2 
is being defended as a 30 FPS game because of the graphics and the lighting, right? Oh, look how pretty it is. So we can't really conclude anything yet. Now, a year later in 2022, they released that infamous trailer, the Cavern cinematic trailer. It was like a test demo for Unreal 5. Like many of the other UE5 trailers, it looks absolutely incredible, right? Again, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I can't help but notice in that trailer, all of the focus on the lighting, all of the focus on the graphics, right? That cavern trailer is a huge focus on those things. UE5 was supposed to usher in this great era for gaming, and all it's managed to do is give us games with shaky performance and a 30 FPS Hellblade 2. Well, not yet. It'll be here in a month. So if the cavern trailer is any indication of where things are headed with projects from the coalition, I really hope they figured out optimization and performance. Again, I'm not trying to be negative here, but... The recent Hellblade 2 news allowed me to get some input from John Linneman at Digital Foundry. And he said the following about Hellblade 2. So keep in mind, this is something he said about Hellblade 2. And I've got the tweet here nice and big for you. It says, I think the actual issue is more down to Unreal Engine 5. Hitting 60 while using all of UE5's features at this level is very difficult without basically running below 720p, it seems. Perhaps they should offer a 540p 60 mode, though. Yeah, I think he's being a little tongue-in-cheek there. I don't think he literally means they should offer something that's that slow. But that's his mindset. Is like, look, man, UE5, and you turn on all those features, you're just not going to get that great a performance. You're going to lose performance. I mean, Hellblade 2 is going to be running at dynamic resolution. It's not even going to have a static and stable resolution so this means if gear 6 is built in ue5 and uses all those great features and all that great lighting would they need to be turned off for a performance mode and you know john lineman said in another tweet about hellblade 2 he said turning off those features wouldn't be viable but there are ue5 games with performance modes lords of the fallen has done this with dips into 432 on the series s 648 on the series x and the ps5 Avium uh, was 60 FPS, kind of, but it slips very low. Now, I know Immortals of Avium recently pushed out some kind of an update on consoles. We're hearing good things. I've not had a chance to check it. So this made me a bit confused when John Lineman from Digital Foundry said, nope, Gear 6 will likely not be capped at 30. He simply said, I would wager it'll be 60 FPS. I don't think they'll walk that back. Now, what he might be referring to is the fact that they updated and got 120 FPS on the Series X and the Series S. Now, I've made similar arguments about GTA. Everybody's saying, oh, GTA 6 is going to be a 30 FPS game. Well, they updated GTA 5 to 60 FPS. Why would they walk that back? Okay, I feel like people are not necessarily maintaining some consistency here, right? Like, it's like, well, if GTA 5 is going to be 30 after giving a 60, what makes you confident in Gear 6? Like, they might do the same thing. They might be like, hey, we really wanted to turn on all these great lighting, all the great lighting and graphics. Now, keep in mind, John referenced the other games that are in Unreal 5 because they're actually having issues with their performance modes. So again, I'm, I'm not sure why anybody would be confident that the Coalition is going to magically figure this out. Now, I've got more commentary from John in a minute because I'd asked him directly like why are you so confident in the coalition I'll get to that in a second I have to admit I bought into the hype about Unreal 5 okay it's shaping up to be a very very pretty aircraft carrier it's super shiny it can do cool things but it's all very heavy all those pretty things come at a cost so that's sort of the backstory so what is recently developed that has made us talk about gears 6 according to insider gaming quote in the most recent episode of the kind of funny x cast the topic of gear 6 came up with the host paris lily and leading guest jeff grubb making their predictions they both claim that something related to gear 6 will happen this summer prompting many to believe that they will be a reveal occurring during the Xbox Summer Showcase. Now, if you think that this is just like a lighthearted prediction, Tom Warren weighed in, and they said this at Insider Gaming. They said, The Verge's Tom Warren corroborated these claims, adding more credence to the rumors that are swirling. Now, the next part makes me think that they're announcing games too early. Okay, Xbox, their MO seems to be to announce things super far in advance. Hellblade 2 was announced five years ago. State of the K3 was announced four years ago. We've seen and heard nothing about that game. So they probably have no problem announcing Gear 6 as soon as they have something to show. Here's what Insider Gaming had to say. It was claimed that the Coalition has been working on the next Gears of War game, widely assumed to be Gear 6, for 
for at least a year. So there is likely a good amount on the bones to reveal something during the Xbox Summer Showcase, should that be the case. Okay, with roughly only one year of development time, I would assume that they're announcing a game roughly four, maybe five years before we're going to actually see a release date, right? They've only got a year in. They would need minimum, I would think, of another four years to really develop a solid game. Now, maybe that can calm some of my concerns. That's going to touch on something that John Linneman said to me. I'll get to that in a second. That like, hey, it's four years away, probably. But it also begs the question, would anybody accept a 30 FPS game in 2028? All right, that's four years years from now less and less people are accepting them in 2024 now according to a notable leaker shinobi we are apparently not ready for what gear six will bring and this is more from insider gaming it says speaking in a cryptic post on reset era user shinobi 602 suggested that gear six will boast mind-blowing visuals this comment was made in response to users fawning over screenshots of hellblade 2 and they said wait until you see gears people aren't ready lol now given this response was to somebody getting excited about all the screenshots of hellblade 2 it actually doesn't give me any confidence about the 60 fps question if hellblade 2 is about to be upstaged by gear 6 what does that mean for performance people are already running with the whole oh gear 6 is going to be a moment for xbox game rant said the following they said according to the latest rumors gears of war 6 could potentially be the moment for xbox series x Given that it's only roughly one year in development, I can't see celebrating that. So what, in like 2027 or 2028, I'm, Xbox Series X is finally going to have a moment? I'll be honest, I'm not excited about this reveal. Uh, and in part, it's because of the larger discussion with Hellblade 2 and Unreal 5. So let me give you my position on this, okay? My position on this is actually like a series of questions. First, and most notably, will this be another 30 FPS first-party Xbox game with out of performance mode now john lineman replied to a person on my twitter thread about this and he said the coalition is the single best unreal focus developer on the planet and while i appreciate his confidence the issues seem to be related to ue5 not the devs utilizing it so i reached out to john to elaborate i asked him if his confidence in the coalition was high enough to overcome all the challenges and problems that he outlined for me with UE5 and with Hellblade 2. It's like, you're out here saying, don't expect 60 FPS from Hellblade 2. Look at Unreal 5. Look at other games in Unreal 5. Look at all the features you have turned on. So I'm like, is your confidence that high in the coalition? This was his answer. He said, yep, it's that high. UE5 itself has also improved a lot and game shipping later will perform better. Go back and check out the early UE4 games last gen. They were horrendous. So what he's essentially saying is something that kind of gives me hope. It's like, okay, there's hope for Unreal 5. It'll get better. The Coalition's got probably at least a minimum of of another four years to work on Gear 6. And by then, maybe they will get a whole lot more out of Unreal 5. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll go back and patch Hellblade 2. So I really do hope that he is right. That shows a ton of promise for UE5. Like, all the videos we've seen of Unreal 5 Engine were like, oh my gosh, look at what they're going to be able to do. And then a bunch of the games that have come out in it, it's like, oh, they, they have a ton of problems. Now, I hope the collision, the coalition, I'm sorry, is skilled enough to overcome all the previously cited hurdles. Now, another big question I have for Gear 6 Will this be a multi-plat release? If they're just one year into development, I don't really see a reason to lock this to Xbox and PC. By the time it releases, multi-plat Xbox Studio games, that'll be pretty normal, I would think. But that makes for a brand new question. If the Coalition made the decision to make Gear 6 this visually intense, cinematic 30 FPS game, you know, all those PR things were being told about Hellblade, would that fly? with consumers on a PS5 or a PS5 Pro in 2027 or 2028? And would that be an opportunity for a game to maybe be 60 FPS on the PlayStation platform, but not on the Xbox? Like, maybe just the PS5 Pro, okay? Jez Corden recently claimed on a podcast that Kate Rayner, the vice president and technical director at The Coalition, 
She now runs her own division, and what she's doing is she's helping other Xbox studios get the coalition level with the Unreal Engine. So they're basically like, listen, we know all this great stuff about the Unreal Engine. We're going to now develop essentially a team to help other studios do the same thing. Now, this could be part of the multi-plat strategy to ensure that Unreal games get better performance. She could be going over to maybe Ninja Theory. I don't know. Let's get that performance mode for Hellblade 2 on the Series X. Now, even though John Linneman is confident that they can get 60 FPS for the console in Gears of War 6, another question hanging in the air is, is the 30 FPS and the 60 FPS situation a parity issue for first-party Xbox Studios? Every Xbox first-party game has launched either 30 FPS on both or 60 FPS on both, and when the 60 FPS update came to Redfall, it came to both consoles. So let's say that John Linneman is correct, and Gear 6 gets a great performance mode, but what if it only works on the Series X? Would Xbox allow that? What if it only works on the Series X and the PS5 and the PS5 Pro? What about the PS5 Pro? It's literally designed to give you more frames in really pretty modes like 4K modes and ray tracing. Would they let an Xbox first party game tap into the greater power of the PS5 Pro? Will this push into, like, if they're pushing into more of a publishing role, I'm curious how Xbox handles these types of decisions going forward. They let Sea of Thieves get exclusive cosmetics for the PS5. They let Hi-Fi Rush get exclusive features with the DualSense controller. I would lean toward them allowing a developer like the Coalition to tap into as much power and as many features as possible. And that feature parity and performance parity will soon be a forgotten memory. Now, my last question about Gear 6 is this. Will it be live service? As in, will they leverage PvP, online, multiplayer, or any other ongoing content model? With the success of Helldivers 2, I can't help but look at Gears and think, alright, it's your turn now. They're the ones that gave us Horde Mode, which has influenced a bunch of other games. Just the term Horde Mode, right? That's from Gears of War. It's, it's time for the granddaddy of the Horde Mode to bring something amazing to the market. Helldivers 2 proves that shooting Shooting baddies with your buddies is winning. It, it, it's, a, it's a very winning combination. It's fun. It's a very addictive model. So, what are my predictions? Well, I was going to predict 30 FPS, but John Lineman has me doubting that, all right? And I truly hope that he's right, okay? I hope three or four more years in UE5 gives the Coalition what they need. Now, that would turn the tide for some... But it would not turn the tide for how worthless my Xbox Series X feels, okay? Even friend of the show, Doc Dark, has completely switched to PC gaming, admitting, along with me, that our Xbox Series X just really has no use. By the time Gears of War 6 strolls into the market, I imagine it'll be multi-plat, and if it can have 60 FPS, okay, if they can nail that, I'll just play it on my PS5 Pro. So, that's my other prediction. I actually believe Gear 6 will be a multi-plat release. Numerous leaks and insiders are claiming that in-process projects have been switched to non-Xbox exclusives. It might be why, as I've theorized before, why we kept hearing about the Gears collection and it just never came. It's maybe being ported so that it can be a multi-plat release as well. That'd be a great runway for getting people excited about Gear 6. Lastly, Do I think Gear 6 will be live service or not? I'm honestly torn because I think it could, but arena-style PvP just seems to sort of struggle lately. Uh, Battle Royales, extraction shooters, you know, these larger-scale games, they seem to have changed the PvP consumer's palette. At least, that's what it seems like to me. Sure, games like Valorant have done well, but that's aimed at a very specific type of player. I honestly wonder if Gears could do more with the PvE side of things, similar to how Helldivers 2 has been so successful. Gears definitely has a secret sauce and a really good feel, and I think they could leverage that beyond just PvP or a battle pass. So those are all the questions and thoughts that I have. That's what I think. What do you think? So let me give you my closing thoughts and conclusions on this so that way I use this to sort of transition to talking to the live audience like the monologue's over it's time for us to talk right 
while I appreciate John Linneman's confidence in the coalition, I'm still super skeptical, okay? Not because of John or the coalition. I think, you know, he's got good insight. I think the coalition, they're really good at what they do, right? That that cavern trailer looked really good, but the cavern trailer looked really good. That could be a kind of, you know, infatuation with lighting and pretty graphics that means you lose performance. And I also feel this way because of how much Xbox has failed to deliver on everything they promised for the Series X. If it isn't a priority for the parent company, well, why would first-party studios make it a priority, right? And that's the second thing I want to say is this is where the multi-plat effect, it could come in and save the day, right? But that's a double-edged sword. There's two multi-plat effects. Games landing on PC and PS5 will need to think differently about performance. If you're making your game for those platforms, you can't just be like, well, yeah, it's 30 FPS, it's really pretty, and if most of your Xbox console consumers are on the Series S, they're accustomed to getting lower-performing games. They bought the lower-performing box, but building a game for all those platforms brings in the other multi-plat effect. If you're building a game for the PS5, the Xbox Series X, the Series S, and PC, something we're readily seeing right now, it causes issues with polish and optimization. Games come to market and you're like, yeah, this clearly wasn't ready. Honestly, with an engine like UE5 that allows devs to tap into more pretty graphics and lighting, I think the whole problem gets worse. Pushing games and game engines to their absolute limit while also building for multiple platforms may have a compounding effect taking an engine and squeezing everything you can out of it for one system I think leads to better results this is evidenced by the insomniac engine it's been evidenced by the decima engine I just think that you can clearly see when you focus your your, your development down to one platform with that engine you're going to get a whole lot more out of it my conclusion is this After what happened to 343 and Halo Infinite, many might want Gears to carry the mantle, but with the very likely future of switching to multi-plat releases, what mantle is that exactly? At that point, I just hope the campaign and the gameplay can be incredible. Lean more into that open world aspect like Gears 5 did, but not entirely. I don't think you want to change Gears into an open world game. You could also really evolve the horde mode. Take inspiration from Helldivers 2. Make Gears of War a big name in the industry. Again, I I believe they have the ability to do that. I feel that Gears 5 was a step in the right direction, and hopefully Gear 6 can take things even further. But those are just my thoughts. Now it's time to hear your thoughts. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And this, I've got, I've got two Xbox topics for you today. Kirk and I are going to be talking later about, well, what if we were the CEO of Xbox? Because there's just been some continued disgruntled feelings from the Xbox crowd, and uh, we're going to be talking about that. So make sure you guys are here for that. And Han shot first, and so did you. First gifted member of the day comes in from DK Baker, the single gifted master himself, starts us out with the first let me pop out chat so i can talk to you guys and uh make sure you guys are going through that ritual as well when you guys are here in the mornings and you're liking the shows you're digging the shows a great way to make sure more people see this video is to smash that like button we already got our first 100 likes so let's set our sights on 200 we got enough people here for that there's over 500 of you here so thank you so much for being here nick says gears is a dinosaur I really liked Gears 5, though. I think Gears 6 just has such a great feel. I'm sorry, I think Gears of War just has such a great feel. I, it's It's got a look. It's got a vibe. Like, I don't know, the armor and the characters and the... That you know, the just the just the cover-based mechanics. It was one of the first. I remember some of the first footage I ever saw of Gears, and you know, they were they were uh, playing co-op. And they both went up on a door and stood on either side of the door and started shooting from cover. I was like, bro, I've got to play that, you know? I feel like they've set some really good standards for the industry, whether it's horde mode or cover-based mechanics or um, just co-op play in general. 
Yo, another gifted member comes in from Joker Quinn. You guys hit the goal last week of 2,300 members, so I'm going to be playing ju- a Jump King style game this Friday night with Madam. That's a great reason to upgrade. She played Stellar Blade over the weekend, so if you guys missed that, make sure and go back and watch that. You do need to be at the $6 tier or higher. This week's goal is a little bit higher than the 2,300. We got to hit 2,500 this week, and we did drop down a little bit again. It's We're at 21 132 so you guys are gonna have to scramble this week it's gonna be a little bit harder to hit the goal this week but i believe that you guys can do it gears one through three are great four and five are trash yo good morning feed i see you in the chat i did not like gears four i don't even remember how far i got in gears four i was like i've played this game before i was down in some area we were trying to get to an elevator and i was waiting for a guy to pop out so that I could shoot him with the torque bow or whatever the heck it's called. And I was like, bro, I've played this game before. The gameplay just hadn't changed, like, at all. And then Gears 5, I played that all the way to the end. I really felt like Gears 5 felt like a new game. It was fresh. There were weapons that were new that you could utilize jack in combat. They added open world elements. I really, really liked what they did with that game. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, he's right. I'm not ready for 30 FPS. Yeah. Okay. What do, do you guys think? I mean, that's the question on the thumbnail. Do, do you guys think coalition can figure this out? Like they couldn't figure it out with Hellblade two, but apparently the coalition is going to be able to figure it out. Well, according to Jess Corden, they, they pulled somebody from the coalition who's now going to help Xbox studios get unreal engine up to what the coalition's able to do. Like maybe they can actually get Hellblade two to have a performance mode later on down the line. I don't know if the Coalition's that good with the Unreal Engine. I mean, that that was where John Linneman from Digital Foundry was coming from. He was like, yo, no, these guys, they're the guys that'll do it. They know how to operate this engine. You know, the, the, the further you get into the life cycle of an engine, you're going to get better performance. And I was like, man, John, I really hope that you're right. I really, really do. 30 for the campaign, 60 for PvP. Eugene says, no, I don't believe so. I don't understand why a bunch of Microsoft Studios are pushing fidelity over performance. Um, yeah, the games look pretty, uh, but I bought my Series X for 60 FPS. First Redfall, Starfield, now Hellblade 2. Right, and then that's the question I'm asking about Gear 6. Like, at this point, why would anybody be confident that an Xbox first-party studio would prioritize that? It's not being... It doesn't seem to be a priority. It doesn't. And then the Xbox Twitter account... Did you guys see that tweet? It's like... Did they do that, like, literally to troll about how <clears throat> they said, like, how a game plays is better than how a game looks or whatever? And I'm like, you all literally just let previews into the wild and every defense force person is saying the same thing. They're like, oh, well, it's so pretty. It's okay that it's at 30. And it's like, I, have you guys seen the Cavern trailer? The Cavern trailer for Unreal is absolutely insane like hang on cavern trail uh trailer unreal like i don't understand why anybody thinks that this here hang on that is not right there we go so i don't know why if you watch this trailer i don't know why you think they're not gonna do the same dadgum thing they're gonna push lighting reflections and graphics And every time you do that, that's when performance suffers. Like, if that's your priority, I mean, look, they're doing the same thing with with, uh, Hellblade, are they not? Look at all the hairs. Look at all the pores in the skin. Like, look at the level of detail on the face. Joe Mack with eight months says, I love the Gears series, but it might just be me. uh, But the running in Gears makes me dizzy. The screen shaking while running is the worst part for me. Yeah, I wonder if they would let you turn that off. That never really bothered me. Yo, Doc Dark. You got mentioned in the monologue, Doc. He said, stop the nonsense. Nothing on the Xbox console will run 60. All cinematic experiences from here on out. Get a PC if you want 60. At least that's what they told me for three years. Doc, I told him. I told him. I said, listen, like this, this is what the coalition's figuring out right here. That's what they're doing. Like that to me, it's like, all right, you're going to be real pretty. It's going to be real pretty. And they're going to run us all off the PC, Doc. I mentioned you in the show open. I said, like, there was an article, Doc, where it said Gear 6 could be the moment for the Xbox Series X. And I'm like, what? When it comes out in four years? So that's what we're going to say in 2028. We're going to be like, yeah, dude, this is it. 
th- th- this is the moment for the Series X. It sat for seven years and done nothing virtually. And come on. I couldn't believe it when I read the article. I was like, do you even see what you're typing? Gear 6 has allegedly been in development for roughly one year. Okay? So that means the game's coming out a minimum four years from now. Minimum. So in 2028, we're going to be like, this is the moment, dude. That's the moment for the Series X, Doc. You just got to wait until 2028, brother. That's how long you got to wait. Doc Dark's having his Xbox villain arc. Yo, what's good, Kirk? Ain't no way Gear 6 is 30 FPS. They'll make it 800p if they have to. I mean, listen, Kirk. uh, John Linneman was like, he was like, no, they'll make it 60. He's like, they won't walk that back. And I'm like, okay, you guys seem to think that GTA is going to walk it back. GTA 5 updated itself to 60 FPS and Digital Foundry's like, yeah, no, GTA 6 is going to be a 30 FPS game. It's going to run 30 FPS on the PS5 Pro. And I'm like, okay, first of all, there's no way to know that. Second of all, the, the same logic, right? Why would they walk it back? Why would GTA walk it back? Why would the Coalition walk it back? Doc says, I don't know if it's smart or dumb on Xbox's part, but I moved to PC, yet somehow I didn't really leave Xbox. The Series X got left. I don't know how to feel. I don't think they care about that. I don't think they care at all, Doc. They lose money on the hardware anyway. If you move to PC and you're still loyal to them and you're still on Game Pass, they win. They win. Every person that says right now, you know what? I was going to upgrade to an Xbox Series X I was going to buy one, you know, maybe they're still on the old Xbox and they decide instead to do PC and they get on Game Pass, that's better for Xbox because they're not losing money on the hardware. So they're getting you in their ecosystem, they're getting you in their subservice, they're getting you to buy their games and they're not losing any money on the hardware. This is exactly why I'm like, are you sure? Like, like John Linneman from Digital Foundry. Like, I love him. Like, I'm not including him in this show to be critical of him. He was he was willing to kind of get in the ring and give some feedback and give some insight. I'm like, John, I love you. But do you honestly think that the coalition is going to prioritize the Xbox Series X console? Why, why would they? In four years, so over the course of the next three to four years, they're developing this game. Why would they care about that piece of hardware? Why? Which then brings in the other question. What if this is a multi-plat release? Then what does it look like? Who are they going to prioritize for optimization and performance at that point? Who? The tweet you mentioned, I saw Mikey Barra comment on that tweet. It's all a bit confusing. That tweet did not go the way Xbox hoped that it would go. Tom Warren got on that tweet and was like, I agree, Xbox. Games, the way a game plays is better than the way that it looks. And he said, 60 FPS is better than 30. They're getting cooked on that tweet. It's like, (laughs) they literally, in the wake of a game coming out that is so pretty, it's running at 30. And they're like, how a game plays is better than how a game looks. And I'm like, y'all are not paying attention to the dialogue about your platform. Y'all aren't paying attention. Or you are paying attention and you're just trolling at this point. Cross-gen gear 6 and you think it'll be 60 FPS on the X? Four years from now is a new gen? Uh, that's an excellent point. Maybe maybe I should have pressed a little bit further. Does, maybe John Linneman thinks this is a, this is a launch title for the next the next gen consoles maybe they're gonna skip or or no like you're saying maybe it'll be cross gen and you'll get 60 on the new you know you'll get 60 on the new uh consoles that come out i don't know the elemental hero says i'm having concerns with gear six because of new storyline that they may have the writing for the characters uh has been changed and not being like how they were before i mean i'll be honest with you i like gears and i like the characters but for me I never got deep into the story. I know the characters. I know the names. I know the significant moments, you know, but I've never been like, oh man, if they change the story, I'm not going to be able to enjoy it. Now, hardcore Gears fans and Gearheads, listen, I get it. Nobody likes when they feel like their game or their story or the trajectory of a game story has been tampered with. I totally feel you on that. It just is not something that I'm super concerned with. I want it to look good, run good, and have a great gameplay loop. That's all I generally really care about in a game like this. 
it doesn't feel like a game where like, oh, if the story changes, I'm going to have a bad time. That's what Grub and Paris were saying. That it's next gen. Grub is the one who dropped Gear 6 announcement this summer in the first place. Right, okay. So if it's next gen though, the topic that I was you know, debating on Twitter was like, do you guys think this is going to be another 60 FPS console game? And then you got Game Rant out here saying, yeah, Gear 6 could be the, the moment for the Series X. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's like at the end of its life cycle. It's finally going to have its moment after it's basically over and done with and everyone's moving on to the new gen or everything's changing or people aren't even buying it anymore at that point. Who's buying a Series X in large quantities four years from now? I can't imagine. I don't even know how much that digital one's going to sell. Is there even going to be demand for it? Why would you want that? Every, they've been they've been constraining production of Series X and prioritizing the Series S. So why would anybody even care about a digital version of the Series X? It's such a weird decision. Orc Lord with a five spot says Gear Six will be sixty because five was okay. Graphics probably not four K. Gears Four and Five ruined the franchise when they changed the active reload system. Okay, yeah, I don't. I didn't have a strong opinion on that. I, I can appreciate somebody not liking that. The receipt polls would be glorious, says Eugene. Be even better. Imagine an entire Xbox generation with no Gears title except a cross-gen 30 FPS one. Who's buying a Series X in large quantities now? That's what I'm saying. Guys, make sure and take a second. There's almost 600 people here. We're talking Gears of War 6. I'm worried it's going to be 30 FPS because it's in UE5. Guys like John Lineman from Digital Foundry are like, no, the Coalition, they're gods. They are gods with the Unreal the Unreal Engine. They'll figure it out. They'll have you know, they'll they'll make sure that it's that. Now people are talking about how oh, it's gonna be a cross-gen game. I'm like, cross-gen game? Well then that means they don't really have to give you 30, I'm sorry, 60 FPS on Series S and X. You're gonna be the you're gonna be the old old guy in the room at that point. And a gifted member comes in from Rich Rod. Thank you so much, Rich Rod, taking us to three members on the day. Guys, you got a big goal this week at 2,500. You hit 2,300 last week, okay? You hit it last week, and this week we're going for 2,500. But every 25, I give five. So I was helping you guys last week. We were going crazy. I gift immediately to help with the momentum. Lono has a PC. It's strange why he's worried. It's strange why I'm worried that I bought a $500 console that is basically a walking advertisement to play on PC. That's that's what I don't get. Like, how is that hard for people to understand? Like, r- really? Mike and a Mike with 25 months and a VIP says, what's good, people? Like, Doc Dark literally took the advice of people that have been telling him for three years, well, yeah, if you want 60 FPS, you got to play on PC. Stone Spire with a gifted member. Thank you so much for taking us to four members on the day. Like, who who does that? Who buys something and then is like, well, I didn't get what I was promised. I'll just go play on PC. That's fine. I, that, that doesn't bother me at all that I bought this thing and I'm not getting the thing that I was promised. I'll just go play somewhere else. I just, uh, this is just a $500 uh, walking advertisement for PC gaming. $500 is budget tech. I don't have to go from uh, my PlayStation 5 to get 60 FPS on PC. What did you expect? I expected what I was promised. Like, the revisionist history to me is embarrassing. I I think it's embarrassing. I think that you're an embarrassing consumer if you stare down the barrel of up to 120, 60 FPS standard, and then we get four years in and you just shrug and you're like, I mean, what did you expect? It's 500 bucks. I expected what they promised me. I got it on my PS5. So clearly there's something wrong over at Xbox, right? If I bought a $500 piece of plastic that's a walking advertisement to go play on PC, like... If Gears of War 6 is 30 FPS, people are going to say the same dadgum thing. Well, what'd you expect? What do you mean, what did I expect? The word expect is linked to the word expectations, and the expectations that were set by the marketing was that I would get that. Your PS5 does 1080 60. You're misrepresenting it. That's not true at all. 1080 is the internal resolution. You clearly don't know what you're talking about and probably don't own one. Yeah, Helldivers and Returnal or 1080. There it is, knew it. Yeah, that's the internal resolution. Thanks for playing. 
zero points and you're not going to one guy me you're not smart enough to talk to can you imagine if someone said last year that xbox would shift tactics and port games to rival consoles and games would be releasing at 30 fps i literally i literally said that to brooklyn breed and i were talking in a dm we were talking in a DM, and I was like, imagine if they would have promoted this gen with what we're getting. Imagine if they would have done that. <laughs> like, like, go back in time. Go back in time and rewrite all their marketing to include Redfall, Starfield, Forza Motorsport, Hellblade 2. Do it. Go back in time and make that all the marketing. Nobody would have bought the console. That was Brooklyn's point. He's like, I wouldn't have bought this. Brooklyn brought a he bought a Series X for himself and a Series X for somebody else. And he was like, I wouldn't have bought it. Nobody would have. So, so when I look at Gear Six, I'm like, that's the other question: is if it's multi-platform, do you guys think that they would let them do that? Would they let them tap into the power of the PS5 Pro? I mean, they're letting Sea of Thieves give exclusives to PlayStation. They're they're letting uh, Hi-Fi Rush give exclusive features to the PlayStation. So it's like, to me, it's like, they're not going to... I wouldn't think they're going to stop the coalition from saying, get that PS5 Pro dev kit, baby. That's what we want to show. We want to show that gameplay. That's the gameplay that we want to show. Of course, you would think that your views align with this. No, no. You you don't get to make it about me when you lose the argument. That's pathetic. That that you don't get to do that. The PlayStation 5 is delivering what I was promised. If you don't like 1080 upscaled to 1440 because you think you can tell it's happening when most people can't because upscaling technology continues to get better and upscaling technology is one of the reasons why we're going to get better looking games and better performing games with things like DLSS as well as upscaling that's going to come from AMD and the upscaling that's going to be in the PS5 Pro. Upscaling continues to get better and better and here's the beauty. If you don't like that, you can play in quality mode on the PlayStation 5. Isn't that wonderful that they give you the choice and that you get to choose between the two things? Like, you literally get what we were promised from the marketing. You don't get that in games like Starfield. You're not going to get that in Hellblade 2. You don't get the choice. Which is why I look at Gears of War 6 and I say, okay, uh, I don't have any confidence that they're going to give us a 60 FPS game. Why would they? The, the, the saving grace would be that it's a multi-plat game and they're going to have to think differently about the perception of that on other platforms. How is 1080 upscaled to 2K? How was that what you were promised? It says 8K, 4K on the box. And there it is, guys. He's an 8K on the box warrior. Appreciate you for trying to play, man, but you are not able to engage in this conversation in an educated way. And I'm not going to retread ground that smart people understand with somebody who doesn't because you clearly don't know what you're talking about so continuing to engage with you is wasted effort you're not even on the landscape of the discussion in the realm of like how the consoles were marketed the expectations were set and how one is grossly falling below what was promised 8k on the box I want a freaking shirt that says that. I want a shirt that just says 8K on the box. I I just want a shirt with the 8K logo on it. That's all I need, right? It'd be so distracting. You might not type in my chat anymore. You'll just stare at the that you'll just stare at the shirt. Let's not forget that even though VR is niche, the PSVR2 is the best on the market. Well, I think the issue is we don't even need to talk about PSVR 2 or, you know, how how they maximize their tech. That's not the point. The point is, is that what are first party Xbox studios going to do going forward? If they're considered multi-plat games, like if basically they're publishing multi-plat games, where's the priority going to be? Where? 8K in the box was scummy. That's another person that needs educated on 8K. Like, it's literally a requirement to put it on there. I see performance mode on consoles, uh, and they're passable. But they don't look good. But I assume I'm on the higher end of the PC spectrum, so I probably have some bias there. Uh, It works for you, though. Cool. 
Right, but that would be like basically buying the absolute best television in the world and then going to your friend's house and being like, yeah, it just doesn't look as good. Well, of course not. Of course not. Like, if you're at the upper echelon of tech, anything below that isn't going to be suitable for you for you it isn't like and this is why everybody misses the mark on the discussion it's like we'll just get a pc if you want performance no i want performance and convenience which is what a console promises that's what it promises me it's 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 convenient because i just i just plug it in I'm not dealing with Windows. I'm not dealing with driver updates. I'm not dealing with mouse and keyboard. I'm not dealing with any of that. I just plug it into my TV. People are like, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that hard. Sure. But the consumer doesn't care about that. The consumer is going to go to the store and say, this thing promises this. I need two cords. Well, three, maybe. If you're on Wi-Fi, you need two cords. You need a power cord and an HDMI cord, and you're done. Okay? You don't need anything else going on. The average consumer looks at the back of a computer, and they're like, ah, no, thank you. I don't want to deal with any of that. Graybush Gaming with nine months is closing in on the year mark. Gear 6 will 100% be 30 FPS. I have zero faith in Xbox Studios. Can they optimize the game to run at 60 FPS? And Stone Spire comes in with a gifted member and takes us a five. Five out of 25, Stone Spire's trying to tempt the big boy to drop a 20 bomb. Y'all are going to need some 20 bombs if you want to hit the gold this week. The gold this week's 2,500, and then we have to play one of my favorite games with two controllers. That's a fun segment you don't want to miss. I addressed this when I said I have a bias. Right, but I don't understand the point of saying that. The point of being like, I don't think it looks that good, but that's because I play on a high-end rig. Okay, like, uh, yeah. Do you think Gear 6 may suffer because of how Suicide Squad went? This is the concerns came from my last message. I don't even think they're comparable at all. They're not comparable at all. I don't understand why you would compare those two games. If Gear 6 went in the direction of live service, they would either do something with PvP, Horde Mode, or both, which is not even remotely in line with what Suicide Squad did. They're not even remotely the same type of game. I, if anything, I think Gears of War 6 would take inspiration from Helldivers 2. Like, come on. You guys gave us Horde Mode. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we play a game now and we're like, oh, there's going to be a Horde Mode, you're quite literally referring to Gears of War when you say that. Karen, with three months of membership, says, I just joined the convo. You said it was required to put AK in the box. Why? Sounds like the convo is about misadvertising in the console. Um, if anybody wants to bring up 8K from this point on, I'm not reading your message because that argument is tired and it's peddled by stupid people or willfully dishonest people. I'm sorry. I'm over it. Educate yourself. Go use Google. I'm not going to do this. Every time we talk about video games, the whataboutism from angry Xbox fans that, well, 8K is on the box. It's also on the Xbox box. They're just literally telling you the top level output of the device. I'm so freaking tired of this. Go educate yourself. It's not my job to keep educating you on 8K. It is tiring. It is so tiring. I could explain this probably to my kids and they could probably come back in two weeks and explain it better than the gaming world seemingly understands it. It's so exhausting. Noberto with 35 months says, keep killing it, homie. F the hate watchers. Been with the Xbox of generations and I'm making the switch after this nonsense. Hold them accountable for their promises. Much love. Much love, brother. Has Gear 6 been announced or revealed? No, it's not wishful thinking. Very reliable insiders are like, a Gear 6 announcement is coming. So, Jeff Grubb goes on the X-Cast, tells Paris Lilly, he was like, there's a Gear 6 6 thing coming this summer. Paris, I believe Paris said he's heard similar things. Tom Warren from The Verge comes in and he's like, I've heard the same thing. There's going to be a Gears of War 6 announcement basically this summer. Gears of War 6 will not be 30 FPS. Facts. The Coalition are the gods of the Unreal Engine. It'll have a 120 in multiple facts. Please hold me to that. J-Rock, listen to me. Listen to me. That's what John Linneman from Digital Foundry said. He was like, dude, Coalition are the best 
developers in Unreal in the market. Essentially, that's what he said. Like, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, they'll figure it out. He also told me, he also told me, he said that the the nature of Unreal 4 was the exact same. Unreal 4 hit the market, the early games were horrendous, and then they got better near the end. And he thinks the same thing's going to happen uh, with Unreal 5. Yo, DP Sage with 28 months. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work, brother. I appreciate that. The Cool Spoon says, also, Gear 6 has PvP, so at least 60 FPS is a must. I mean, they've not confirmed that Gears of War 6 will have uh, will have PvP. This guy's been saying dumb stuff for a long time. It was only a matter of time. Yeah, I, I, I just don't even... I don't even get one guide by these guys anymore. And then the minute you stop telling them that, they just stop, because it's like, that's what they want. I want to pull you into a nonsense argument for 35 minutes and hurt the show. And it's like, no, I'm stopping giving people like that power. They show up less and less anyway. It's better. It's better for the show. Um, Consoles were literally born from easy access to video game, which got its birth from the arcades. Well, I mean, the entire idea of putting a con- like a gaming a gaming device in the home for the, for the longest time that was seen as like that's insane. You're not going to pull that off. Like the earliest iterations of like a of like Pong, Atari, and Coleco. If you go watch, if you essentially go watch some of the documentaries on it, there were people that were like you're never going to pull that off. There were people that thought the Nintendo was like this is a fad. This isn't going to last. Gaming in the home isn't going to last. The internet was supposed to be a fad as well. Gears doesn't have the same clout it had after the third game. I'm shocked the franchise is still around, says Brooklyn Breed. I don't know, though, Brooklyn. I think it's iconic, and I think that helps a game. Did I thank the 20... DP Sage, thanks for the 28 months. I think I thanked you. Captain Toasty Buns with 28 months says, Renewed over the weekend. Good morning. Thank you so much, Captain Toasty Buns. One game is not enough. Sorry. I'm not sure what you're saying, Kellen. Console gamers have been playing at 30 frames for the last 10 year plus. Now people expect different. Why do you think they expect different, Capono? Why? Oh, also, they've been playing games at 30 frames per second for the last 10 year plus. You know what's remarkable? Not me. Not me. I stopped playing 30 FPS games four years ago. Isn't that interesting? How new technology came out expectations were set a value proposition was made i purchased a device and i no longer play 30 fps games isn't that remarkable how that works it's kind of interesting that like tech advances like go back in time and look at the version of quake 3 that i played are pc master race guys playing games that look like that no you would never say that in any other situation Imagine somebody upgrading their PC and tell them that. Well, I mean, you upgraded your PC and you didn't get any... You, you're still playing games at 1080, 30. You're still playing games at 1080, 30. So, you know, why is that a problem? You've been playing games at 1080, 30 for a really long time. You know what they would say? They'd be like, I bought better hardware. Like, I did this so that I could get better performance. What do you mean? Why would I not expect better? Like, imagine saying that to somebody who did that in in the PC realm. You're expecting a $2,000 experience from a $500 box? No, you're moving the goalpost and creating a standard that nobody, nobody claimed. Nobody claimed that. You're making that up. That's a straw man. Nobody has once said, I expect $2,000 PC experience out of my console. Nobody has said that once. Like, you're doing that classic goalpost shift of, well, I'm going to blame the consumer. You shouldn't have expected that. What are you talking about? I was told I'd get 4K games. I was told I'd get ray tracing. I was told I'd get no more loading screens. I was told I'd get 60 FPS. And you know what is just absolutely remarkable? One device I bought gives me those things. Isn't that interesting? You're telling me I expect $2,000 performance out of my $500 box. No, I just expect what they told me I would get, and I've gotten it. I've gotten it. If somebody came to me right now and they said, I want 60 FPS games, 
I want no loading screens. You know what? I'd even love sometimes to turn on 4K ray tracing. You know, I can kind of switch between the two. I'd be like, oh yeah, you can get a PS5. It does all of that. And listen to what Severin Evans is saying. It, it, like you're not even you're not even entertaining what a two thousand dollar PC could do. A two thousand dollar PC better do a whole lot better than sixty FPS. <laughs> like, imagine imagine buying a two thousand dollar PC and being like expecting sixty FPS or four K thirty. Like, if you spend that much money on your PC, you're probably going to expect a little bit more than just like, oh, I'm not going to get any loading screens and 60 FPS. That's the entire point of this discussion. It's like, when I look at Gears of War 6, I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. I don't think it's going to be a priority. But if it's a multi-plat game then it could be a priority. It could be a priority for the other platforms. It could be a priority for the PS5 Pro. Generations of consoles before were focused on bringing higher resolution. Now that we have a high and meaningful resolution that reasonably meets the eye's arc length, FPS has a priority. That's exactly right. A single gift of member coming in from Stone Spire. Just tell your internet provider that you want them to throttle your internet because it was fine for 10 years. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> like when you switch from broadband, from, from dial up back in the day from like broadband to DSL, where you're like, you know, don't complain about the speed. We were on dial up all this time. You'd be like, no, they told me I was going to get this speed. I better get this speed. J. Wright comes in with 20 months, says the only next-gen, uh, a.k.a. current-gen console is the PlayStation 5 uh, if this is the performance we get on Xbox. Okay, so when I had the internet first installed in my home, I was paying for a gig from the cable company. A gig down. And the guy comes in, he hooks everything up, I run a couple of speed tests, and I'm getting like 30 to 40 down. I'm getting less than half of what I've been promised. And I tell him, I'm like, listen, man, federal law states, you got to at least give me 80%. On average, I need to at least get 80% of what you have sold me. You can't sell me a gig, and then I only get 30 or 40 down. I said, "Uh uh-uh, something is wrong. Something isn't working properly. And he tells me that the speed sites are capped. And I'm like, okay, don't tell me stuff that I know is not true. These speed test sites are not capped. I should be able to get well above this on the speed test, okay? I've, I've done speed tests before on these sites, at, and I've seen screenshots of speed tests on these sites that far exceed what I'm getting right now. He leaves, refuses to fix it, so they got to send out another guy, and he comes out and he fixes it. Now, in that instance, if that guy would have told me well, for the longest time, home internet was not even beyond 20 down. You know, 30 and 40 is even higher than that. You should be happy with what you're getting. If I would have accepted that as a consumer, I'm a sucker. I'm an absolute buffoon. To pay for a gig down and take, well, less than half of that because the guy's like, well, you, you, you used to get way slower speeds in this, so what's the big deal? I'm a buffoon, I'm a sucker if I fall for that. And that's the argumentation we keep having on this subject is you're just a sucker who bought a box and refused to admit that you got taken for a ride. I'm willing to admit I got taken for a ride. A lot of us did. Doc Dark is in the chat. This man ran to PC. This man ran to PC. Jay Wright with 20 months of members. Oh, I already read that. Doc, where are you? I know you said something else. Oh, I thought he said something else. Kirk thinks he's going to get sassy Lono today. Sorry, Doc says, sorry, I had to go to a meeting real quick, but Lono, the 30 FPS is not a problem for the Series S owners. That makes sense to me. The problem is all of the 30, is all 30 FPS. Okay, Doc, let me ask you a question. (laughs) How many people bought a Series S and they were told that the only difference would be resolution?
Lona was wrong. If you're okay with what I want you as a customer forever, don't you change? <laughs> I would want you as a customer forever. I'm just your working brother. Think about that, Doc. When people bought the Series S, they were told the only difference would be resolution. And another single gift that comes in from Rissick, taking us to seven members on the day. Thank you very much. That's what they were told. They were told only things that resolution. So even even constantly getting 30 FPS games on the Series S, that's a problem. Fair point. Thank you, Doc. Like, even they bought something on a false pretense. Like, Doc, you and me say it all the time. We're the biggest losers in this, right? Remember the TV show, The Biggest Loser? Remember that? Yeah, We're the biggest losers because we bought the more expensive box and we've hardly seen an uptick on most of the games that have come from the first party studios. Right? Did I count your gifted Stone Spire? Stone Spire with another gifted. No, I didn't. And then John Always with 31 months. Thank you so much. Eight members on the day and a lot of renewals as well. Thank you guys so, so much. Point is, is Gear 6 may have a bad story or the writing of the characters may be bad or more. That's why I'm asking if Gear 6 may suffer. Let me ask you guys this question because this is very relatable to what Doc just brought up, okay? And it's related to Gear 6. Eugene has thrown out a theory and I don't think it's a bad theory but obviously this isn't going to stay static because once they start leaning into publishing multi-plat games this might not be an issue okay but currently Eugene has said that for Xbox first party studios he thinks they are not allowed to release their game and have it be 60 on the X and 30 on on the S. He thinks there is a specific parity clause for first party studios because every time a game has come out it's 30 on both or 60 on both and I'm going to add a little fuel to his argument. It was proven that a performance mode or a 60 FPS mode was achievable on the Series X in Starfield. And the question would be Why would they not do that? My gaming rig ain't that remarkable. And I tweaked settings for like a minute and I got steady 60 FPS everywhere but the big city. I got 60 FPS everywhere. It's a 2080 rig. I I tweaked settings for maybe a minute and I got 60 everywhere except for the big giant city. So I'm supposed to believe they just couldn't figure out how to get a 60 FPS mode on the Series X? The Series X is not that far behind my 2080 rig. It certainly is behind it, but not by that great of a margin. I tweak settings for a minute. So if that's the case, if they can't get 60 on the S, then you're not going to get it on the X. That's the argument. That's just absurd. Do you don't think it's you, you, you don't think it's true? You don't think it's true. I don't know, dude. <laughs> it's it kind of seems like they're like, "Listen, if you can't get 60 on the S, you are not shipping this game and having 60 on the X and 30 on the S." Now, this question in this theory gets even more complicated when you consider the fact that they might start shipping first-party games on PlayStation. They might start shipping first-party games on PlayStation when the PS5 Pro is in the market. Well, what do you do then? What do you do then? What do you do when there's a market for people and there's a market of consumer that are going to not they're going to expect better. They're not going to expect a 30 FPS game. Do you think people that bought a PS5 Pro are going to buy a 30 FPS game? Imagine right now that Hellblade 2 was a multi-plat release. How do you think that would go? I don't, I don't think the PlayStation owners would be like, no, that's fine. It's really pretty. They'd be like, we've been getting pretty games for the last four years. What's the big deal? Now, I know that the faces in, in Hellblade 2 are remarkable they look fantastic like there's elements of that game I'm like okay you guys are clearly showing off the tech 
But to me, that doesn't matter that much once I'm playing. Like, once I'm playing the game, I don't care about how good your tech is. Lono got to be upgrading the 2080 rig. Old tech alert, baby. Hey, 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 hey. I plan, I plan on it. <laughs> Leave me be. Leave me be, dude. I'm not big on PC gaming. I wish I was. I'm not. I, I drifted away from it. You know? I drifted away from it. I just... It's... You know, you just change as a person. You change as a gamer. Guys, do me a favor. We have been streaming for a little over one hour. If you've never been here before, consider hitting subscribe. You can talk in the chat. Once you subscribe, that unlocks chat. Subscribing is totally free. I am a safe for work broadcaster. That means I'm not in here cursing and swearing. You can throw me on in the background of your day. A lot of people treat me like a radio show or a podcast. Depending on how old you are, you might not even know what a radio show is. But, you know, for the old heads in the room, this is like talk radio, Johnny. So you can turn me on throughout the week. Pause. You can put the show on throughout the week. Put me on in the background. Listen. Make sure you hit subscribe. Do me another favor, though, okay? The like button has been super weird on YouTube lately. Make sure your like is saving. Hit that thumbs up. It helps this video. It helps it find more people. It helps us find more folks that are interested in the topic. So consider doing that. You can also gift a member like Stone Spire just has done, or you can pick up your own membership. If you click join, very, very briefly, let me say this. If you click join and you decide to become a member, just make sure you pick the $6 tier. The $5 tier is for gifted. If you want to actually get into the extra content that we do, like my wife played Stellar Blade on Friday, we do a writer's room segment every day. If you want to see how the bread is made, how we plan these shows, I outline them on a board. We talk thumbnail, we talk POV, you get to see behind the scenes, pick that $6 tier. We would really like to see that tier get about 100 more people to upgrade because a lot of you are in the gifted pool and we love you. But if you can afford your own membership, Man, consider upgrading. It makes room for the people that cannot afford a membership, and you get way more content. All right, there we go. That was one minute of station identification. Thank you for indulging me. Back to the conversation. I'm a simple man. I see a Lono stream. I click the like button. That's right. YouTube, oh, one last thing. YouTube won't always put me on your homepage. YouTube can act up. You can't trust that. That's why getting in our Discord, that's why following me on Twitter will ensure you never miss a show. Sometimes you have to check your sub feed, and I'll be there. I'm live Monday through Friday, so. How the sausage is made. Gosh darn Lono sausage. Creature's the one who said, see how the bread is made, and I keep saying it that way. You are right, though. The saying is, see how the sausage is made. That's just ripe for pause. Honestly, the best part of Xbox is backwards compatibility. I love that I can go back and play games I love from four generations ago without having to rebuy them. Eugene says, the idea is absurd. So Eugene's going to push back on the notion that his theory is absurd. Okay? Where can you get this shirt? This shirt comes from Into the AM. You can use my code over there. You can go to intotheam.com slash Lono or use code Lono. Sorry, we're like a walking commercial right now, but Infinite Ass, this, yeah, this shirt comes from over there. Oh, I've not had the camera angle switching, so definitely check that out over there. So Eugene's going to push back on the notion that his theory about Xbox First Party Studios are not allowed to launch a game with 60 on one and 10 on the other. And MASH comes in with a 10 bomb! MASH has been dormant for a while, but he's back and he's swinging, and he gets us right on the doorstep of 25. Thank you, MASH. And 31 months from Ginger Prime says, if Gear 6 is 30 FPS on Xbox, talk about another ad for PC gaming and cloud gaming. Ginger Prime is like, is this an opportunity to talk about cloud gaming? Like, that's Ginger. We love Ginger. Thanks for being here, buddy. <laughs> and thank you for the 10 bomb mash so, so much. Eugene says, the idea is absurd, question mark. Show me an Xbox developed game, not an acquired studio, that runs 60 FPS on the X and 30 on the S. He says, good luck. That's a valid point. Another gifted member comes in from Stone Spire and takes us to 20 members on the day. Redfall was 30 on both until they both got 60 FPS. That's right. <clears throat> Ginger's like, do you have a moment to discuss our Lord and Savior, Cloud Gaming? That's right. Like, literally just put Ginger on a bicycle. 
you know, and he can ride around town and he can pull out his book of cloud gaming and be like, doom, 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 like knock on your door. And he's like, hi there. <laughs> I really want to tell you about cloud gaming. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I don't, backwards compatibility is not a big selling point to me though. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't buy a next gen console so I can play old games. I buy a next gen console so I can play, I, this is going to sound crazy. I know this is going to be outlandish. I know this is going to be a hot take. I know I'm going to end up in a reaction video for this, but I bought a next gen console to play next gen games. I said it. I said the weird part out loud. I know. Isn't that crazy? It's nuts. That's why I bought a next gen console to play next gen games what an idea (laughs) extra extra read all about it streamer claims he bought next gen console to play next gen games what an entitled woke idiot baby who hates women there you go i made your your completely made up byline for you so you can just rake in the rage clicks you know (laughs) uh we're still waiting for all those cloud services to compete. Uh, infrastructure's not there. Forza Horizon 5 is 60 FPS on the S. Yeah, we've looked into this. We have. We have looked into this. When the PS5 Pro comes out, says uh, Ray or Rai, Xbox might change their stance on the 30 60 FPS parity. Yeah, Motorsport is 60 FPS on the S. We've looked into this. They have not... A first-party Xbox studio, they have not released a game that is 60 on the X and 30 on the S. Do you honestly expect me to believe... Like, seriously. Do you expect me to believe that they couldn't get Redfall at 60 FPS on the Series X? Like, come on. What are we even saying here? Uh, I actually think Eugene is right. I think there's a parity clause for first-party games, which begs the question about Gear 6. I forgot to do the white balance thing. Sorry. Did they sell the S saying it's the same thing at lower resolution? It makes sense they codified that. They did say that, Zubair. They said that in the video that they set to private on the Xbox channel. They said, homie with the really long beard said that the only difference would be resolution. They basically couched it. We said this all the time when we got told that we were liars and it's not true. You can go look at the original Xbox marketing. They basically couched it as the Series X was the 4K box and the Series S was the 1440 box. You got guys out here tweeting things like, you know, things like this. I don't think y'all realize the Xbox Series S is a big deal. 1440 at 120 is where it's at. And Shinobi, notable leaker Shinobi, was like, to be honest, I'll be shocked if we see next-gen games at 1440, 120 on the Series S. And he was told, prepare to be shocked. That was the going narrative back then. That was the going narrative. Why? That's what the marketing said. Like, it's hard to fault these guys. It's hard to fault the guys that were hyping it up. They watch the same trailers you and I watched. They saw the same now-deleted tweet from Aaron Greenberg. That tweet's gone, by the way, where he said that the standard output would be 60 up to 120. He deleted that. That's gone. Reforge is IGN and Microsoft promo talk. We all know it's not to be trusted. (laughs) Yeah, well, now we know that. Now we know that. I I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's a parity clause. Because they told everybody the only difference is going to be resolution. So when they ship a first-party Xbox game like Gears of War 6... Gear 6 is going to be under the same parity clause. So, I have a new question for John Linneman at Digital Foundry. Does he think that the Coalition can get Gear 6 to be 60 FPS on the Xbox Series S? Because, if they can't, then we have to wonder, is that an internal policy that can be amended? 
And then what does it mean for any Xbox first party studio game landing on PlayStation 5 or the PlayStation 5 Pro? What does it mean? Yeah, I know. Richard Ledbetter got all that wrong as well when he said, you know, the Xbox was going to push games to 16 up to 120 and that PlayStation 5 was going to be at 30. They were way off. They were way off on all of that. They were looking at teraflops. They were looking at the paper. Okay? The details on paper, they were like, mm, this one, this system's going to be stronger. And, you know, it's like that scene in Dumb and Dumber. He's like, you know, I thought the Rocky Mountains would be a lot rockier. That John Denver is foolish. Like, they, ba- <laughs> like, that's the moment. <laughs> like, wait, where, what happened? Series S was supposed to run circles around the PS5. So, the, the entire reason that I was thinking this about Gears of War 6 is I was like, okay, when does Xbox make that change as a, as a publisher? When do they make that internal policy change to say, well, no, if you're making a game, you can you can get better performance on the Series X, the PS5, the PS5 Pro if you want. Like, at what point does the Series S get left behind? To be fair to Digital Foundry, they have been shocked and they have given Mark Cerny his flowers since then. This is true. They've not tried, they have not at all tried to like protect themselves from the fact that they got they got some of their predictions wrong. They 100% have been like, how did Sony do this? Like, this shouldn't have happened. The smaller company with less money is just kicking the dog snot out of out of Microsoft with respect to hardware. It's it's like it's laughable. It's like what is this is a David and Goliath situation. And they've been saying that they're like this doesn't make any sense. How are they doing this? Where's where is the you all the payout for the hardware and the teraflops? Like where is it? Why well, it's non-existent. And I'll tell you why it's non-existent. This goes back to our arguments about exclusives or anti-consumer. This goes back to our arguments about building for one system. There is not, there is not a game in the market right now that has been built for the Series X. There are games right now that are built for the PS5. There are games right now that were like, I tell you what, in production, we're going to use the dev kit. Even though we're a cross-gen game, we're going to tap into the power of the PS5. You don't have that on the other side. Why? Because they launched their next-gen system two-tiered. And they also did this in the wake of saying all Xbox titles are going to hit PC day and date. So every game developed is multi-plat, never curated, never cultivated for the series x ever another gifted from stone spire you guys are gonna let stone spire do this all on his own the man's gonna take us all the way to 25 with single gifteds <clears throat> thank you so much stone spire stop saying series x lono it's a series s pro i'm waiting to see if games can hold 60 once we get a second wave 2025 2028 games Oh, I don't think you're going to have any problem doing that. I don't think you're going to have any problem getting 60 FPS games later in the gen. The companies get better at utilizing the 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 the, the power. It's why some of the developers at GDC were like, well, why do we need a PS5 Pro? We haven't even tapped into the full power of the PS5 yet. D- did anybody say that about the Series X? Nobody's trying to tap into the power of the Series X. Why? It was because of how X- Xbox deprioritized it. So that's the thing, is it's like, that's why when I hear these leaks about Gears of War 6 and Shinobi's like, oh, you guys think the Hellblade 2 pictures are good? You're not ready for Gears 6. And I'm like, that doesn't get me excited at all. Hellblade 6 is gorgeous and it's old gen performance because they went so hard with the lighting and the features. And allegedly... John from Digital Foundry's like, Coalition will figure it out. I'm like, I don't know, John. I don't know, dude. I look at that cavern trailer. I look at the lighting. I look at the realism. And I think you're going to try and put a game that's leveraging that level of beauty on the Series S. And you think they're going to figure out 60 FPS. And if and if Eugene is correct, did I say Hellblade 6? <laughs> 
Hellblade 6? Hellblade 2? Sorry. A five bomb from JW. And that is... That's Agents of Chaos. I'm talking about too many games. I get confused. I'm getting old. Don't... That's ageist. If I make a... If I speak... If I speak incorrectly and you guys point it out, you're being ageist. I'm just an old man trying to find my way in the world. All right? Hellblade 6. <laughs> Real King Salty with a 10 spot says, This is Microsoft's main issue. Having a Series X only to get the performance sidelined by a significantly weaker budget console is flat out dishonest. The next Xbox console needs to be one and done. And a five bomb comes in from MASH and takes us to 31. And a single comes in from Patrick and takes us to 32. Thank you so much, boys. I owe you guys five now as well. We're trying to push the 2,500 members, and Stone Spire does it again. Takes us to 33 members on the day. There we go. We got a little member train going. Hop on the member train. Take us all the way there. I'm joining the member train myself right now. Here's the five that I owe you. <clears throat> Cerny asks devs what they need, and they tell him we need... Fast is blank data streaming. Cerny develops proprietary architecture for it. Result, Ratchet and Clank loads faster on a PS5 than anything else. All right, there's the five members that I owe you guys. Hellblade 6, Senua's mild anxiety. (laughs) Right. She's really progressed. She's really come far. Can we get 14 more likes on the video, man? There's almost 700 people here. Hi, hate watchers. I hope your clips help your channels. Um, Just wait. Higher frame rate doesn't improve visual quality. Widescreen is a preference. Just like my preference for a 65-inch TV and trying to make a difference between 4K and dynamic 4K is not a resolution jump. Hang on. Lone Wolf says... I think the Series S will be a cloud box by then. I doubt Xbox will still be enforcing it at that point. I think they'll be more concerned with the X being outshined by the PS5 on performance. Well, here's the thing. I I actually think you're probably right, Lone Wolf. A lot of us have speculated that the only path forward for the Series S is to become a cloud box. If, if, you're, if you're going to attempt to leverage new tech, new power, new graphics thresholds, all these things, you're going to have to come up with some other solution. Like the Series S will simply... this. Okay, so think of it like this. Typically, when like a new console comes out and it's next gen, it, they do cross-gen support for a while. Okay, so the gen always starts out that way. Why is that? Well, because games have been in production for four or five years. So when the new gen lands, they're not suddenly just like shifting gears. Like, no, screw the old gen. Our game won't run on the old gen. That takes time, right? It always takes time. Well, Xbox entered the market behind from the beginning because they came into the market with a console that was weaker than the thresholds that they were promising. Doc says, dang, Lono, I think I'm going to make a video called The Promise. The problem is, I don't remember how much was promised by Xbox and what was promised by influencers. Doc, if you can go back and watch Project Scarlet Marketing, the Project Scarlet trailer, and the Series X trailer, especially the Series X trailer that includes the Series S, you got to watch it on IGN because Xbox set theirs to private. Just, it's like, it's why Aaron Greenberg deleted his tweet. Everything they said is just not true. They're trying to hide it. They don't want people to go back and see it. Homie, you go back and watch those those trailers. You're gonna not you're not gonna feel very good. You're not gonna feel very good. I would make sure you're sitting down and you know watch it watch it on an empty stomach. Do you plan on ending early so you can view the eclipse? Oh, no, uh uh-uh. Mike, I think my kiddos are going to do that. The Series S shouldn't be considered next-gen, never was from the get-go. Yeah, the influence were were, were just regurgitating what Xbox said. That's why, like, it's fun to laugh at them and receipt pull, but it's like they were just... It, 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 It would be like me saying back then... 
I can't wait to play 60 FPS games and then like making fun of me and be like, well, how was I supposed to know that this wasn't going to happen or come true? You know what I'm saying? Like there would be no reason to act like I should have known better. Yeah, it takes some Dramamine first. That's exactly right. All right. Let's let's discuss something else with respect to Gears of War 6. I'm curious what you guys think about this. Let's We're we're, we're saying things that we know aren't going to change anytime soon. You guys seem to think that Eugene's theory is pretty solid that like Xbox first party studios are not allowed to release a game at 60 on the X and six and 30 on the S. But you guys are also saying that like that's probably all going to change once they start launching titles on multiple platforms, right? Multiple consoles, I should say, because right now they already launch on multiple platforms. So one of the things I talked about in the show opening monologue was, you know, I'm not sure if Gears of War 6 is going to be live service, right? I think Gears 6 could be live service, but I don't think they want to do what everybody would sort of expect, like almost like a cliche you know, very predictable. Oh, it's an arena shooter and there's a battle pass. No, I I don't think that's the way I don't have a problem with them, including PVP in the game, but I think if they're going to do any kind of live service, I think they should take influence from hell divers too, and really come up with great, uh, just really good iterations and evolutions of the horde mode. Because we literally play video games today and we say, oh, it's coming with a horde mode. That's quite literally a Gears of War reference when you say that. So to me, it's like you guys are the granddaddy of hooking up with your buddies and shooting some baddies. Like that's, you guys created that. I remember playing beast mode and I always loved playing as a boomer. Boom. You know, and you'd like, Skyfire. I loved playing beast mode. It was so fun. I, they've got, I think they've got all the pieces and parts to create like a really, like a really, really good ongoing game. Kind of like what Helldivers has done. Like the, the feel of Gears of War, especially if you played Gears 5, like I actually think the open world is, I think it worked. I kind of, I kind of liked it. You identified as a boomer. Only in Gears of War do I identify as a boomer. That's right. I think they could do it. I think they could say, okay, Helldivers 2 is pulling it off. No PvP. Just PvE. Shooting aliens and having a good time. Gears of War built that idea that you could have a game where it's co-op and you play with your buddies and you shoot aliens and it's so much fun. Like, they literally created the idea. Up to that point, most of what you did in games like that, it was PvP. You would play through the main game. You might play through the main game co-op, but then all multiplayer beyond the campaign was uh, uh, some amalgamation of PvP. And so to me, it's like, dude, Gears, they're, they're, they're the ones that could do it. I'm not saying no PvP. I'm saying the ongoing live service could be, hey... There, there's something here. Yeah, I've seen the SOCOM rumor. Um, if we don't see Creature today, it's because he's fapping. Yeah, yeah, to the article. He's very happy. Indiana Jones is going to be 30 FPS. Okay. Yeah, so if Gears of War is, is 6 is 30 FPS, you know, that that's that's so far out in the distant future. It's It's... We, we can't really make a prediction. You know, there, there are people predicting that it won't be, but like Indiana Jones, at that point, I'm like, what's your excuse going to be? Like, what's your excuse going to be? We got all these weird excuses for Starfield, and then we found out that they could have given you 60 FPS on the Series X, and they didn't, which could be related to an internal parody clause for first-party studios. And then we got Hellblade at 30 FPS and we're getting every excuse in the dadgum book. Oh, it's one of the best looking games I've ever seen. Have you played it yet? You've seen clips from vertical slices. You've seen a lot of very well curated, you know, screenshots and clips. You haven't touched the game yet. Are you, are you sure? And is it worth it looking that pretty 
if it runs like that, come on. Like, the fact that people choose performance mode or want a performance mode, do you know what that means? It means there are consumers in the market that don't care about that. They voluntarily shut off 4K. They voluntarily shut off ray tracing. Right? So that means people want the option. It's going to be so pretty. It's going to be so amazing. Okay, 4K ray tracing mode in Ratchet and Clank looks incredible. I don't play the game with all... I don't play the game in that mode. Right? I there, I got plenty of games right now that I can play a 4K ray tracing mode on and I choose not to. Same goes for in the Indiana Jones game. Same goes for Gears of War 6. I would want the option to say no. Turn that crap off. It doesn't look... It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't. It would be like somebody coming to you and saying, we have this amazing paint that we can put on your car and you will never have to wash the car again. You will never have to wax your car again. It will always be shiny. It'll always be day one wash and wax shiny. And you're like, that sounds great. And they're like, there's a catch. The paint is so heavy your car will never go faster than 50 miles an hour. And you would say, what the... What difference does it make that it's prettier if that's what I'm losing in the process? Wow, it's really pretty. And the minute I move, I I don't get to see all the prettiness. It all goes blurry on me. I'm applying the same principle to Gears of War 6. We're being told that we're not ready for what it looks like. Great. Hopefully I'm hopefully I'm not ready for how it's going to run either. Ratchet and Clank has a ray tracing performance mode. Right, I kept saying 4K ray tracing. I was like basically the point that I was making TRM was there are games right now where I can turn all the pretty stuff on and I don't do it because from my perspective, all the pretty stuff doesn't matter when the frame rate tanks because I can't see all the pretty stuff the minute I start moving. It completely negates the purpose. It's really pretty if you stand still. Films are in 24. Yeah, and that's constantly... Oh yeah, Eugene says if someone says films are in 24 FPS, I'm going to lose it. Yeah, there's technological reasons why you don't notice that nearly as much. It's not just because you watch it and don't play it, Jake. It's also because the actual way that they do it, the way they're able to do motion blur in the 24 FPS, somebody explained that on Twitter. I was like, well, that makes perfectly good sense. Super Earth High Command would like us to remind you that the Democratic Detonation War Bond deploys on Thursday. That post has been deleted. Why did Helldivers 2 delete their post? Was there a typo in it? They must have like instantly deleted that. Because it had zero likes according according to your according to your post in Discord. The bugs got to them. Yeah, there might have been a typo maybe in the image that they they posted. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know. It could have been. No reason to release new war bonds since we have won the war. <laughs> James is watching compressed YouTube videos and calling that proof of his argument. Who are you interacting with, Louis? What's he saying? James is saying... All right, hang on a second. Faster loading doesn't mean it can happen on last gen. Industry experts literally said Ratchet could have happened on a PS3. No, that's simply untrue. They did not say that you could do uh, Ratchet on a PS3. One guy commentated and said you could have done the Rift lassoing on a PS3. 
and the rift jumping that they use that technology of instantaneously swapping rifts that has been completely debunked you could not do that on last gen because people installed ratchet and clank on pcs with non-ssds and none of that stuff worked right it wasn't seamless it, it didn't it, it caused all kinds of problems so your claims have been absolutely and utterly destroyed you're just pushing nonsense you're pushing falsehood the rift jumping simply didn't work the minute you were not on an ssd and let me just clue you in on something ps4 and ps3 didn't have ssds all the guy was saying was that you could have done the lasso thing where he like lassos to a rift and jumps to another area he simply said that was something that could have been done back then the guy that said that was was number one he was speaking completely out of turn because one of the primary reasons that ratchet and clank was so impressive was because you literally shift dimensions instantaneously whether it's through the cutscenes or through the actual game itself when you get later in the game so you like many other people you just spread nonsense that isn't true you, you, you take you take some weird comment from a guy who was speaking out of turn, didn't know what he was talking about, and you've read a headline, and you're like, oh, Ratchet and Clank could have been on a PS3. Really? Then why, when they ported it to PC, did none of that stuff work properly when the game was installed on a hard drive, a non-SSD hard drive? You can using a hard drive? Okay, you're not listening because, again, you're grinding an axe. You're not listening. Yes, you can install Ratchet and Clank on a hard drive, and none of the rift hopping, none of the instantaneous rift swapping, none of those sequences, they don't work properly. The entire reason that that game runs the way that it does is because you go from this to this to this to this to this, and it all runs seamlessly. That won't work on a non-SSD. Those features break, basically. Yeah, and it also leverages direct storage, which wasn't even technology 12 years ago. You and the guy that said what he said are dishonest and don't know what you're talking about. It's a terrible combination. Single gifted from Stone Spire. Thank you so much. Plenty of people did comparisons of that game on on, uh, SSDs and non-SSDs, and those features simply did not function properly. Those sequences simply did not work. There's a difference between being able to run and having the intended experience. Right, like saying, like, we made seamless rift hopping. We made these seamless sequences, and it wouldn't have been possible without an SSD. My hard drive is running the game, is lying. No, you're a liar. You're not engaging in the discussion. Those sequences don't work on a non-SSD. I got the game to run. You're not listening, and you're not engaging in the discussion. You're not being honest. You're bad faith and you're dishonest. You're you're literally everything that's wrong with gaming discourse. You're everything that's wrong with it. It's like they literally talk about being able to seamlessly go from worlds and dimensions and that wouldn't have been possible without the SSD. And PCs that can play the game on non-SSDs objectively prove that true. It Those sequences do not work properly they intend for this to happen it, they never would have even thought of doing that on a standard hard drive they wouldn't have it wasn't even a thought because that wasn't possible the, the, the technology wasn't even in existence on the PS3 to be like oh yeah we could just seamlessly go from one place to the next without a loading screen it works though lol yeah see you're not worth engaging with you really aren't people like you are not worth talking to you're dishonest in bad faith go somewhere else you belong in another stream we don't we don't enjoy engaging with liars here you'll hang out long enough to get a gifted member and nobody will want you around because you're dishonest if gear 6 multiplayer runs at 6120 but the campaign and the single player runs at 30 is that a deal breaker yeah, it's a deal breaker because that proves to me they could give me 60 in the campaign and they chose not to. Like, th- like, don't tell me you can give me 60 but just chose not to. Right? Like, what's the... What? <laughs> like, why would you just admit we could have given you a 60 but we just chose not to? That'd be worse. A single from Stone Spire. Thank you so much for another single gifted. Stone Spire's just going in, dude. Takes us to 35. 
Stone Spire's not quitting. So now it's 30 FPS is fine. First, it's known as an Xbox hater. Some of you guys definitely walk around with your head attached to your shoulders. Um, you don't like 30 FPS? Okay, then don't play it. Simple and easy. It is simple and easy. I didn't buy Dragon's Dogma 2. Seemingly a lot of people didn't buy it. Wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people got refunds on Steam because of how poorly it runs. Have you seen it score on Steam? I I don't buy 30 FPS games. I'm only buying Hellblade because I'm like, it's such an immense fan. I'm going to buy it on PC and play it there because it's like one of my all-time favorite games, the first Hellblade. I didn't buy Dragon's Dogma 2. I won't buy GTA 6 if it's a 30. I I don't think it will be. I think they're going to have a performance mode. I think that's one of the reasons they did uh, an FPS jump in GTA 5. I think they were doing research for their next game. I think they were figuring out just how much they could do. And yet it sold millions. I don't care. Why do I care how well a game sells? I'm a consumer with standards, and when a game falls below the standards, I don't buy it. I have too many games in a backlog that are superior to games like Dragon's Dogma 2. Runs like Cheeks on PC and is 30 FPS on next-gen consoles. Bro, I have no interest in your subpar crap. Why would I do that? There are so many games in the market I could buy that are superior. I don't care that it's even going to be nominated for awards. I don't care about that. I have standards that are above that. A good game shrouded in terrible optimization and CPU bottlenecked on a PC and 30 FPS capped on a on a console, dude. I don't give a rip about that. Why do I care about that? Your game is a joke to me. A joke. In in a, in an era where I can throw a dart at the wall and hit a game with better performance, how many games are coming out in 2024? I don't need your game. I don't. I have limited time to even play games. I'm like 30 hours into Rise of the Ronin, and I still haven't finished it. Lono doesn't talk about 30 FPS on Xbox every day. I've consistently talked about performance being my standard this this gen. Like it's why I stopped playing Final Fantasy 16. It's why I've been very critical of the performance in Rise of the Ronin. I love the combat, but I've been very critical of the performance in that game. I'm consistent. I don't care who makes the game. I literally wouldn't touch. I wouldn't touch Jedi Survivor. Its performance mode was so bad before they fixed it. A single gifted coming in from Joker Quinn. Thank you so much. Taking me to 36. And then uh, Eugene hits 31 months in a VIP. Must have had some stacked. Yeah, sometimes it does that. It got weird. We the, One of the reasons we lost a bunch of members is like every 90 days you have to manually renew. He's not crapped on anyone. Yeah, who have I crapped on? I'm not crapped on anybody. I don't I don't let people hang out here that just come in and lie. They waste our time. I'm not gonna run in circles with a guy that's like, Ratchet and Clank could have worked on PS3. Listen, go start a podcast that just, just, just that just parrots utter nonsense and falsehood. There's a ton of them. You'll blend right in. You'll blend right in. You'll do just fine. He says, I'm here in spite of stopping him from bashing Xbox every day. No one cares about your standards, bro. No one cares about my standards. If no one cares about my standards, then why are you here? I bash Xbox every day. Why are you here then? Why? Like, I'm, I'm always genuinely curious. You know what I'm saying? You've, you've seen clips and you've seen, you know, rage farmers making false claims about me well why waste your time coming here if I'm so reprehensible if I'm just some grifter who hates on Xbox why give me even a minute of your time that's interesting isn't it that like you're still here like I don't get that that's a weird decision there are plenty of fraudsters and liars out there you know what I never do I never watch a second of their content Rise of the Ronin is doing well in Asia I, I don't I really hope they can push out a performance patch sooner than later. I really do. Cause man oh man, I feel like it even gets worse on the second island. I do. Cause I feel like there's just more weather effects and fire and stuff that I'm running into, and it just makes stuff look terrible. 18 months from Lone Wolf. Six more months to get that red badge. Let's go. Thanks for all the content, Lono. I say it every month, but I love this community. Thank you, Lone Wolf. 
here to farm clips. Oh, I don't even care about that. I don't even care about that. We, I had people all weekend running to the comments of my Stellar Blade video, and I was like, let me guess. <laughs> Some creatively impotent person put a clip of me in their video so that they could misrepresent me. I told people it was going to happen. It's in the monologue. I said, people are going to false clip me, and they're going to claim that I'm offended by the character in Stellar Blade. And all weekend long, I got comments. And I was like, you know what? I appreciate it. It's very easy to filter those people out. It's like, I wouldn't want you to be a part of my community anyway. Thanks for leaving a dumb comment. It makes my job easier. Like, well, this guy must be, he doesn't like attractive women. Yep, you got me. Praised it, played it, had my wife play it. You're right, you got me. I'm offended by the game. I'm offended. I told you they were going to do it. I was like, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. They will do it. And they did. And they did. And it's like... Literally proved my point. I like... I verbatim said, this is what they're going to claim about me. They're going to claim that I'm offended by an attractive character. And I was like, here they come over the weekend. (laughs) It's like, I don't know. It's like the meta. It's like the new meta is the, is they did it to Alex from Digital Foundry. They did it to him. He had like very minor statements about it. And they were like, this guy's offended by her. Oh my word. Listen, man, your internal shame is not, is, has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Madam thought it was great. She, she had some funny commentary as well. Like, she thought, like, when she slid down a ladder, she's like, I don't think that would have worked. And it was, we might have a video edited of that, like my wife plays Cellar Blade that should hit the channel later. You'll have to keep your eyes open for that if we manage to pull that off. I noticed frame rate drops in Ronin when gliding and hitches in the populated areas, but it's mostly 60 FPS. Yeah, I it got really bad in the one mission that there was, like, fire. You were, like, in a building that was on fire. Okay, that is going to be a blip. We just switched ingest servers really, really quickly. Um, so you're going to probably get some weird audio hitches and glitches. You might have to refresh if that happens. Guys, do me a favor. Smash the heck out of the like button. Give some members do something. We always lose people when that happens, and it, it absolutely kills us because it's like we have momentum. And then for whatever reason, YouTube is like, oh, we need to switch ingest servers. I don't know why they do that. Force VRR on the PS5 playing Ronin, it might help. I think I have all that stuff turned on on the PS5 and on on my television, and I still notice it. It th- Nothing nothing is going to minimize the level of frame hitches in that game. It's super noticeable. That's why they're here right now making clips of how you're mean to chat. Yeah, and again, I just don't care. Like, if you want to convince sycophantic people to not watch me, you're doing me a favor. It's very easy. You know what I mean? It would it would, it would, would literally be like going and telling a bunch of people, yeah, don't bring your dogs over to this yard to crap in it. I'd be like, well, thanks for that. I don't want that. Like, I don't want these people to come to my channel. It's, you're benefiting our community by doing that. Thank you for another one, Stone Spire. Like, dissuading dissuading a bunch of degenerates from coming to our chat like that's some of the best advertisement you could give me keep telling them to not watch like i actually want them to it's been better like everything on my back end looks cleaner now our chats have been better our our interactions have been better i look on my back end it's like okay cool like i'm seeing some of the things i want to see with the audience like literally doing me favors You know, it, it's, it just does, it just, it helps you. It's like you're, you're literally helping purify the funnel of audience that we get, the, the, the type of viewer that we get. It's, it's quite literally some of the best advertisement you could ask for. Uh, James of 23 months says, everyone's saying you're offended by Eve. Obviously haven't heard your many instances of tacky praise. 
Yeah, well, they didn't watch the monologue. I literally say in the opening monologue, there's people that are going super crazy and posting kind of gross clips. There are people who are getting really upset and offended. I said, and then there's me in the middle. I'm like, I just want to play a cool game. I don't care what she looks like. But that doesn't make for a good video when you're creatively impotent and you have to take people out of context because you're not interesting enough. Other people are more interesting than you. Like, that's the kind of content that you make. You know what I mean? Like, if 30 seconds of me is your crutch to get clicks, go right ahead. Go go right ahead. You know what I'm saying? Jedi, uh, you're about to get walked out. Oh, yeah, he already did. I wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. One of the mods got him. <laughs> the world's full of too many soft people. Um, if they think this is somebody being mean, I can't imagine what an actually mean person looks like. Yeah, I mean, I got snippy this morning about the 8K thing because I'm tired of it. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a preschool teacher. It's not my job to educate you on absolutely pedestrian things, right? Like, if every day I had to explain to you the ABCs and 2 plus 2, I'd lose my freaking mind. I'm like, that's not my job. My job is not to educate you on your, and like, to, to fix your ignorance. Like, if you don't understand the whole 8K on the box thing, I'm not doing that every time we get into a discussion about 60 FPS or what is this game going to be like or is performance important or are we getting the performance modes we were promised. Like, I'm not going to educate ignorant people every single time we go to do a show like this that's not my job like if if every single time somebody came in was like well the letter b is a vowel i'd be like i'm not doing this with you i don't have any interest in dealing with that level of ignorance it just isn't entertaining it's not fun we've debated that up one side down the other and people keep coming in with it it's like you know what 8k on the box is not even worth discussing anymore it's pedestrian. It's embarrassing that you even think it's a compelling point. Like you're embarrassing yourself. You are. And they'll put it in videos and they'll act like, look at this pony coping. And it's like, they're just as embarrassing and as stupid as the next person who thinks that AK on the box matters. You're literally admitting that you're ignorant. Like, why would you do that? Why'd you put a sign around your neck? It's like, I'm ignorant about AK. Like, it's just, it's not at all a compelling argument. There's nothing to it. It's embarrassing. Today's letter is the letter F. <laughs> exactly. I just don't have patience for it. We try to have a talk show. We try to hypothesize about, well, Gear 6, will it be 30 or 60? Will it be multi-plat? Will it be live service? They could do fun things with live service. They could do fun things with horde mode. And somebody wants to come in and one-guy me about 8K? No, you're getting freaking walked out the door. Not interested. <laughs> it's like discussing the eclipse, and then suddenly a flat earther enters the chat. <laughs> right? You're like, oh, we're not doing this, dude. We're not doing this, bro. <clears throat> Xbox is the next Sega. Deal with it. Be upset at Microsoft, not people pointing out their obvious failures. Time to move on. Well, and I guess I'm curious about something. I guess I'm curious about something. So the people that believe all I do is bash Xbox, right? They believe that. It's an unsubstantiated, you know, belief. You can't actually go to my live tab and make a case for that, right? Did I bash Xbox when I talked about the PS5 Pro, Helldivers Invasion coming, Stellar Stellar Blade being annoyed with the crowd around Stellar Blade when I played the demo, when I talked about how I was wrong about Suicide Squad, right? When I talked about Rise of the Ronin looking rough, then it was like, okay, it's actually a little bit better, but it's still roughed rough I'm sorry when I talk about Dragon's Dogma and 30 FPS like when I talk about Bungie like I guess they missed all those shows right because they're not concerned with actual gaming commentary they're concerned with anything negative about Xbox they have to run Defense Force for it so that's all they see like they're ba- they, they basically have determined their algorithm they've determined the type of videos that they're going to see they don't see any of that coverage they don't see me being critical of Rise of the Ronin they don't see me being critical of Dragon's Dogma 2 they don't see me talking about Bungie or any of those things they don't see those things because that's what they click on 
They click on anything about Xbox where they got to go run Defense Force. I'm like, well, all oh, this guy does is bash Xbox. Okay, you missed like seven shows in a row where that wasn't even the topic and never came up. But that's all you see because that's all you consume. It's your own fault. And I guess my question would be, why aren't you being critical of them? What's worthy of defense right now? So the hardcore Xbox loyal or the people that want to clip farm to make it look like all I do is bash on Xbox. What on earth is there to defend right now? What? Thank you for the super chat. Therapy Quantified says people want supermodels when they talk about beauty. Aloy isn't ugly. Uh, and if they gave her big this and big that, she would get she wouldn't get the hate. I mean, even that hate was stupid. And another one comes from Stone Spire. Stone Spire is going to carry the member count on his back today. Thank you so much, Stone Spire, taking us to 38 members on the day. I can totally go to your live tab and show that you disproportionately bash Xbox, but Xbox also makes disproportionately bad and unsuccessful decisions. See, but you're saying I disproportionately bash Xbox, Kirk. Am I bashing them by simply reporting on what they're doing? Like, what am I supposed to do? Not cover Hellblade at 30 FPS? What am am I supposed to do? Not cover the fact that you're going to get more stuff in Sea of Thieves on PS5? What am I supposed to do? Not cover the fact that Hi-Fi Rush has more and better performance on the PlayStation 5? What am I supposed to do? Not cover that? Like, that's the thing. It's like, what am I supposed to do? Ignore it? I'm supposed to celebrate it, right? That's what I should do. I should celebrate it. I should be... I should I should throw freaking confetti in the air. Talking about what happens isn't bashing. It's talking about what happens. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't disproportionately bash them. When they're in the headlines, it's not been very good this year. What am I supposed to do with that? Like, oh, we're just... We're just not going to cover one of the largest companies in the world completely evolving and changing their gaming division. We're just not going to cover it. We it's we think that's like a page two story. <laughs> Come on. Anytime Microsoft and Xbox does anything, it's a front page story. Look, look at the gaming outlets. Look at any of the gaming press, whether it's, you know, Game Rant or IGN or The Gamer or Eurogamer or Game Informer. If Xbox or Microsoft, if they fart, it's a front page story. Xbox tax? No. They're a big company. They're the they're like one of the if not the biggest companies in the world. Microsoft is. Their gaming division is if it's of interest, it's like, what are y'all doing over there? You did one of the largest, you did the largest game acquisition in history. So the, the wakes in the water from that, are, they're going to make the headlines. We're going to talk about it. And what's remarkable to me is all of the things we said that were coming are now coming. And it's almost as if you're really upset about that and you want to take it out on me and people like me. It's like you're working out your own internal frustrations about like, I can't believe this is happening and you know this smug little skinny Jimmy Neutron told me it was going to happen so I'm going to take it out on him. I think therapy would be better. (laughs) I think therapy would be more productive. If somebody does something dumb once a week and you cover them negatively two to three times a week, that's disproportionate. But if they do dumb stuff three times a week and you cover it three times, that's on them. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Valiant. And the number of times, the number of times we're like, I don't even want to cover that right now. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of having to cover negative Xbox stories. We've literally skipped stuff or we're like, just save it. Just save it. We'll put it in another show. <laughs> there were so many times where I would literally told Creature in the audience, I was like, I, I don't have it in me. I can't do it. We've got to take a break. 
Just put it in the next show. We would just save it in a room in the Discord. We'll get to that. <laughs> there was there was at least, I think at least two or three Starfield things. We just skipped. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. We started covering Starfield, I think, like once a month. I was like, I can't do it. I absolutely can't do it, dude. Put it in the Discord. We'll save it. <laughs> Actually, that means, ironically, it means you cover Xbox sympathetically. Yes! It, it, well, it's also a business interest. Like, I definitely, you definitely don't want to get in a rut. Right? Like, if you get in a rut of, like, every day, it's like, well, Xbox is this, Xbox is that, Xbox is this. Like, that's not good either, you know. A single comes in from, another single comes in from Stone Spire. Takes it to 39. Come on, gear it up, dude. Let's see the layup to 40 and somebody slam home the 10 bomb, Stone Spire. Their games are 30 FPS until they show me otherwise. Detective Seeds. That's that's where this whole thing started. I was like, I don't even understand. Why would anybody think that that's a priority over there now? But here's the lingering questions that I have. If it's multi-plat, that changes the rules significantly, does it not? But, but what about Blade? R- right? W- what about Blade? We know we are confident that Blade's multi-plat, and we obviously were yelled at, made fun of, mocked, teased, harassed, all of that because I said Blade's going to be multi-plat. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> oh, sure. How's that going for you? How are all those Xbox exclusives that basically don't exist anymore? How's that going for you? Blade's multi-plat. Well, what does this mean for that? Is is Blade going to be in this same camp of like, we don't prioritize performance? I was asleep with this on and all I hear is people defending only having 30 FPS. Why? I, there ain't a lot of people here defending that, man. There's only a couple people that'll come in here and, and have the stones to defend it because they don't want to deal with it. It's like they know most people here aren't, aren't, aren't down with it. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results, but it's a big effing clue, says Zubair. Is it? Is it what, Jake? I'm not sure which question you're asking. Surely Gears will be 30. So let me give you the argument. Um, In about 20 minutes, I am doing a show with Kirk from What's New Video Games, and we're going to be entertaining the question, what if we were the CEO of Xbox? What would we be doing differently? Should be a great show. Especially after today. So the lingering questions that I have is it's like, okay, there it is. There's the single setup right there. That's the layup. Thank you so much. 40 out of 50. We'll see if anybody takes the bait. Thank you so much, Stone Spire. See if the 10 bomb slam home happens. Appreciate you, Stone Spire. There it is! MASH answers like a perfect setup and a 10 bomb all the way to 50. You love to see it. I owe you guys five more members. That's my man right there. MASH coming huge with the support today. Oh, you Jake, you're asking about Blade. There's been speculation, but did they say it was multi-plat? Jake, I would put 50 gifted members on the table. Blade is a multi-plat. It's a multi-plat. There are leakers right now who have said multiple in-process Bethesda projects were switched to multi-plat. Well, what in the world do you honestly think Blade announcement trailer and they say nothing i mean nothing about xbox they don't say series x series s they don't say game pass nothing not a single piece of xbox marketing is there and we were given assurances no 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 no. that's surely gonna be an exclusive and i was like i don't think so If you've got a piece of Marvel property, you are going to brag about exclusivity day one. You're attached to one of the biggest brands in the entertainment market right now. And you're not going to leverage that and be like, yo, Blade, it's ours. Blade is multi-plat. Money on the table. I believe it very, very strongly. That's not evidence. That's speculation. Who 
in the world said that I was providing evidence. Of course I'm providing speculation. I'm making about as a compelling argument as you can. It Look at the trailer. And listen. Listen to what they have said. Listen to what the CFO has said. Listen to what Satya said. The same leakers, the same insiders that told you it's coming. Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, it's coming. Games are jumping. Games are moving. All those leakers said it. And the same leakers that are saying that are like, yeah, internally, all these projects that were that were going to be exclusives, yeah, they're not exclusives anymore. The game is still three to four years out, says Jake. I would love if it was. I was just curious if I missed it. Yeah, there's Jake, I want you to think about that. In three to four years, what purpose does an Xbox exclusive serve? What purpose? Like, what purpose does it serve? Why? Why? Every screen is an Xbox. So, I'm supposed to believe that like in 2027, they're out here worried about an exclusive? They don't care by then. They don't care now. They were planning Sea of Thieves coming to PlayStation 5 like a year ago. Meanwhile, they're out here telling you that these acquisitions are to put more great exclusives where Game Pass lives. A bunch of malarkey. They were planning on doing this for a really long time. They have shifted. They don't care about that anymore. People talking about evidence about to activate all the lawyers we have in chat. Yeah, I mean, the lawyers are weighing in and saying, well, it is evidence. It's it's circumstantial, but it's evidence. Blade is multi-plat and 30 FPS on console, says Doc. So, Doc, guys, do me a favor. Let's get 40 more likes on the video. We could easily have 400 likes right now. Take a second and make sure you press like. It helps this video find more people. Let me ask you something, Doc. Do you honestly think they can get away with that? You're going to drop a Marvel game on the PlayStation platform at 30 FPS? <laughs> you can't do that. There's no way, bro. There's no way. <laughs> like, you're going to go from Spider-Man 2 to that? I said that would be a disaster. I'm about to bring the exclusives back. Well, that'll be a fun conversation, Kirk. I can't wait. I can't wait. I think today's going to be fun. You guys aren't going to want to miss it, dude. Kirk and I are going to do a show about, like, what if we were CEOs? If y'all are not tuning into Reforge Gaming, you miss out on facts-based analysis of the gaming industry. Stop watching IGN and disingenuous analysis. I mean, I appreciate that. These are the questions informed consumers considered. What will this product be in three years? What will the benefit of this piece? Uh, what will be the benefit of this piece of hardware? Me and the homies sitting around informing ourselves on product development three years out. They still haven't established it as an Xbox exclusive saying team ambush you would you would say that from moment one like the minute you got spider-man the minute you have blade the minute you have any piece of property like that homie you're gonna say from moment one you're gonna say yeah this is an exclusive three years the xbox is a pc xbox right ginger and if that's the case then blades multi-plat blades landing on playstation day and date i don't have any doubt about that at all there's no there's no way it makes perfectly good sense. That we know we know from the Insomniac leaks. We know from the Insomniac leaks you need you need to hit a certain threshold when you're mar- under Marvel licensure. You think they're going to try to get Blade sales where they need to go on the Xbox ecosystem and PC only? Get out of here. No. It wouldn't even surprise me if the blade contract was contingent on no you got to put this on the playstation you're out of your head if you think we're going to give you marvel licensure to put your game on the xbox ecosystem on game pass and pc you're nuts we've seen the sales of marvel property on playstation if you want a marvel license if you want blade 
you got to put it over there. It wouldn't shock me in the least. If they were like, you're never going to hit the thresholds we need you to hit. You're not going to do it. You're not going to sell enough copies because people are going to expect it to be on Game Pass day one. And if it is, that's going to tank your sales on Xbox. To be fair, the Blade license is probably cheaper. That's true, Patrick. That's true. But yes, I don't think Marvel and Disney are playing around. They are not going to play around with licensure right now. They need money. Disney needs money. <laughs> They're not going to be like, yeah, that's fine. You can have Blade licensure and you can limit the reach. Now, somebody's going to turn around and be like, well, they let PlayStation do it with Spider-Man. Yeah, and it's extremely lucrative. And even, look at look at even that. Look at the margins on that. Like, even that, it's like, goodness gracious. The, the, the actual budget for Spider-Man is insane. And that, that, again, is why I think a lot of this conversation, everybody keeps forgetting that Xbox first-party studios are going to look completely different going forward. They're going to look completely different going forward. They're not... They, they, there isn't going to be... Oh, yeah. The rumor about Square Enix, Hadigan, it's from a deleted tweet from a known troll. That guy's just... Don't... I would, I would even follow that guy. He literally just lies. He's just another liar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Phil Spencer's trying to get Square Enix. Oh, my lands. I wouldn't expect it to be on Game Pass, but I could see them keeping it on PlayStation. (laughs) Why? You have to make a compelling business case going forward to keep a game off PlayStation. What purpose does that serve? Why, Why do it? Why? They moved... Hi-Fi Rush, they move Sea of Thieves, they're moving more games. All of the all of the insiders have said there are more games coming. There are games in process right now that have switched from being an exclusive to being multi-plat. What's the business impetus to say, well, we took some of our bigger, more notable games and we moved them to PlayStation, but we're we're gonna just stop. We're not gonna do that with something like you know, a blade. It doesn't make any sense. There's no business reason in three years to be like, it's an Xbox exclusive. Let me ask you a question. What does Xbox exclusive even mean? They don't say it anymore, by the way. They don't say it anymore, by the way. So they don't even use the phrase. So you think in two or three years, that phrase is going to resurface with blade? It was Colt Eastwood pointed this out. I'm not even one of the ones that pointed out. Super, super big Xbox guy. He pointed out the fact they no longer talk about Xbox exclusives. They don't use the terminology anymore. That terminology is gone. Like, what does it even what does it even mean at this point? It, what's an Xbox exclusive? What is it? And if there's always the lingering possibility that it jumps to another platform, to me. It just makes perfectly good sense to just accept the fact that games like Blade, games like Gears of War 6, they're multi-plat games, dude. Like, that's just the the goal and the mission. The goal and the mission is every screen is an Xbox, play anywhere, our games are everywhere, we're different from everybody else. They're going to try and make it seem like this is what the industry needs to do. We're doing something that the other guys refuse to do. We're, we're putting our games everywhere. They have a new plan and it isn't exclusives. It's buy everything and get a cut from everyone platform. See, Jake, Jake's with it. Jake and I have disagreed on things before, but Jake's with it. He's like, this is, this is their switch. I think he, I think you're dead on Jake's Jake's longstanding guy who has disagreed with me on things and is, and is liked or, or been sort of in the Xbox corner. At least that's what it's felt like. I don't want to label you, but I feel like you've come from the Xbox corner, you know, when you get into the ring. And even he's like, nah, dude, there's, this is the plan going forward. Yo, Khaled, thanks so much for renewing your membership, dude. That's a red badge. Slave to the system. I wasn't saying that suddenly you should trust what what Colt says. Okay, I'm not arguing that. I'm saying if even he, as a super pro Xbox guy, if even he has taken notice of the fact that they don't say Xbox exclusive anymore, 
I think you need to pay attention to that. That means that, that means that they're moving away from it. It's like there's no reason to say it anymore. It doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Ginger says, that's the argument I made a few weeks ago. They'll have enough leverage to get better deals in the 30, 30% standard. They'll have leverage with certain titles, Ginger, but not every. They'll be able to probably get a better cut on Call of Duty. That's why they didn't want to give PlayStation a super big extension on the contract. Because they're going to want to renegotiate that contract and get a better uh, better percentage. But they're not going to be able to do that with every single piece of property. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to come over with Blade and be like, we want 40%. Like... PlayStation's going to be like, you can stuff that in your ear. We don't need Blade. You need us more than we need you. In the equation of like a game like Blade, PlayStation has the marketing leverage to be like, or they have the footprint leverage to be like, you need us more than we need you. We don't need Blade. It's not our property. We've not paid to produce it or make it. We've not paid to market it. You have. You need us. We don't need you. We'll be just fine without Blade. But with Call of Duty... They could definitely come to the table like, yo, PlayStation, we want to renegotiate. We would like to get a better cut. And PlayStation is going to have to play ball because PlayStation is going to be like, that, that's a massive amount of revenue for us. We, 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 can't, we can't spurn that or we can't do without that. Now, that would be mutual destruction if they couldn't come to an agreement with Call of Duty. It could still be case by case, but having that catalog overall is another negotiation tactic. Right, they could do a catalog offer of like, you better give us a good percentage or you're not getting any of this other stuff. But again, that turns into a mutual destruction standoff. Well, if you don't put your games over here, you're going to lose more money than us. You're going to lose a greater percentage over time than we're going to lose. It's your property. You need ROI on it. Sony may have an incentive to let Blade fail without them. Make sure Xbox doesn't get any other Disney Marvel license. R- right, exactly. Like, yeah, you guys can you guys can keep Blade. We don't want it. I honestly hope we live in a world where Microsoft is making such great games that they can't even renegotiate. Right, the game's quality has got to be there. The game quality has to be there too, Ginger. Think about that. Like, when they're pushing out games like do you really think you can do you really think you can bring a 30 fps game to the table and leverage and and negotiate with playstation do you think you can do that playstation sitting over there on on the precipice of having the most powerful console in the market end of this year ps5 pro and you think you're going to come to the table with a 30 fps game you're going to leverage that you're going to negotiate with them they're going to like keep your game we don't need that over here no we don't want that. All that's going to do is come over here and take up space in the store and make customers angry. They're going to buy it and be irritated. We don't want that. We don't want a 30 FPS game over here. You can't be out here marketing a PlayStation 5 Pro and PlayStation enhanced games that are promoting constant 60 FPS and then receive 30 FPS games. I just don't think you can do that. I don't think that quality and fun games are the only real factor. And this is where I have said, and I said this about Gears 6, I said the the saving grace could be that it's multi-plat. Now, you guys know my opinion on multi-plat. Multi-plat development is a double-edged blade. On one side of the blade, it's like, you got to make your game really good because it's going to sell everywhere. But the other side of the blade is you get games like Jedi Survivor and Dragon's Dogma 2. And it's like, yeah, we're building our game for Series X, Series S, PC, PlayStation 5. We're trying to tap into PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced features. And what happens when you do that? You get a game that's going to struggle with optimization and polish because they're developing for all these platforms. So, multi-plat is a double-edged bl- it's a double-edged blade. It's like sure, it's going to motivate the developers and it's going to motivate Xbox to be like this game's got to be good. We're in a buy to play market now. We need the game to get a good score on Steam. We need to get we need we need the game to sell well. You can't shove a Forza Motorsport on Steam. You can't do that anymore. You can't shove a, a, a Starfield to Steam. You can't. Look at the scores. That hurts your sales. If you think that doesn't hurt your sales, the Steam marketplace is huge. A lot of people on Steam, a lot of PC gamers out there. And when you land with a score that low, that affects your sales, that affects your profits. You know what to make G4, you know what to make uh, Gears run great? GeForce Now, <laughs> you son of a... 
Lazaro, good to see you. If Gear 6 is like a reboot of, of sorts, I'd pick it up. I don't know if they're going to reboot it. I feel like they would just pick up where Gears 5 left off. Gears 5 felt like a great evolution of the franchise. I liked Gears 5 quite a bit. I got to schedule this show with Kirk. Starfield was a financial hit. I didn't say that that Starfield didn't get didn't make money. I said that hurts your sales. It hurts your sales. You can make a ton of money and you can have a game that 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 is financially successful. That doesn't mean that they don't look at their Steam scores and think we would have sold we would have sold a lot more copies if the Steam score wasn't so dadgum bad. You you think Dragon's Dogma wouldn't have sold more copies on PC if the score wasn't better? Come on. How many people refunded Dragon's Dogma? How many people are playing a game like that and saying, or or are going to the market and saying, well, I was going to buy the game, but good lord, it's got such a bad score. That affects sales. That significantly affects sales. I'm not saying that makes the game a financial flop. That's not what I'm saying at all. Having it hurt your sales doesn't mean that doesn't equate to financial flop or not a success. But we all know these companies care about one thing. They want to maximize profit. You think they're happy when they see a game hit Steam and get obliterated on the score and not sell well? Sales weren't hurt though. There's literally no way for you to argue that. Rise of the Ronin is outselling Dragon's Dogma in Japan. I wonder why, says Eugene. Could have something to do with the name. I don't know. I wonder if performance plays a role, though. You just, I don't know. You have to wonder. What's what's the main cause there? Dragon's Dogma sold 2.5 million. I was told that when Final Fantasy 16 sold 3 million in its opening weekend, that that was a flop. I wonder what less sales on a multi-plat game means. It's more expensive to bring it to market. You're in more places. That's. I thought that equaled more sales automatically. That's what I was told. I was told that when you go multi-plat, you automatically make more money and more people buy the game. Weird that that didn't happen. Almost as if ideology ideology doesn't determine truth. You know? I thought exclusives were anti-consumer and multi-plats were automatically better and sold better and performed better. It's weird that the exact opposite has taken place with those two games. Odd too. Ronin, lesser known game, you know, lesser budget of marketing, smaller, smaller company. I don't know. That's just weird weird I thought I was told the other I thought I was told the opposite (laughs) and again we're not talking about did they make a lot of sales or did they make a lot of money that's not what we're talking about I'm talking about when a game gets a low score in Steam it affects the sales to argue otherwise is ignorant if you think you're going if you think you're going to the Dragon's Dogma storefront on Steam and that score is not affecting its sales, you're dreaming. You don't understand how that works. Imagine you go to Amazon and your product, you launch a vacuum cleaner and it has 2 or 3 stars out of 5. You know that's going to affect your sales of the product. To argue otherwise is absolutely ludicrous. <clears throat> All right, I got to get uh, Kirk on the line here. And I got to get the browser open over on this side. There he is. Oh, no. He did it. I can't hear you. Can't hear me? Oh no! You were laughing quietly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's the Discord is actually good, so you never have to worry about me yelling because it actually cuts it out. So that's wonderful. 
Although that one day it got through, didn't it? With Doc and Mike, huh? Depends. Yeah. That was depends. the best. That was the best. That was a that was, that was a fun day. Yeah. When you it, when you got out, you're like, I'm gonna go get some water or whatever. Was I was just gonna I was just take a break. You guys were gonna do the show without me. It was great. I'm always looking for an excuse to take a day off. Yeah, Kirk said he was gonna he was gonna dress up for the occasion. <laughs> I think I did oh. pretty good. Like I look I looked the part, I think. Yeah. You yeah, you look awesome. Is he gonna mouse voice? No, he's not doing that today. I still don't know how that's that's I hope, that's I hope. Jesus Christ. Uh let me change the overlay too, because he's not Mike. Do, 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 do. There we go. You got a new headset? Same headset. Yeah, same headset. Shoot me the uh shoot me the stream link in the Discord actually. Or er, like Discord. ours. Uh Our DM. Give me one second. You have it. There we go. Nice. Okay. We thought this would be fun. Like, you know, no major news going on. There's a lot of like disgruntled Xbox fans. We thought, what what if we were the CEO? What if we were in charge? What would we do? And we have not told each other what our plans are. That's the best part. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what Lono's going to say. <laughs> Nuke the site from orbit. That's my... No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. It's the only way to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Burn it down to the studs. I'm bringing back the words, boys. Exclusive. We're also going to have to set parameters, like, are we allowed to go back in time for this discussion? No, 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 no going back in time. Now, maybe, okay, I think we have the right to reverse public statements or decisions, like, that were recently made without an incredible amount of fallout. So, like, for instance, if you just wanted to say, I am going to put Starfield on playstation i think it's okay for you to be like and also i would have i would have not done that podcast like a month ago where he directly said that it wouldn't happen you know what i'm saying like i feel like there's a little realm of time like maybe in the last three or so months we could be like yeah since they did a dumb thing that doesn't coincide with my plan we're not doing that you know something like that but like within reason right like it would have to be very recent no that's fine that's fine okay Chat. Oh, yeah. Give me a mic check, Kurt. Give me a notice. I wasn't watching volume. Yes, yes. One, two. Okay. Here at Xbox. (laughs) Here at Xbox. We love 30 FPS. We love it (laughs) so much. (laughs) It's more cinematic. I want to. I just want somebody. I want the WWE to help me with this. I need somebody to come out and say that we made our game 30 FPS because it's more cinematic and I just need somebody it could be Jake Paul I don't care it could be Logan Paul no Logan's the one in the wrestling right why, Logan. why is it the Pauls like why are I, you specifically fixated on the Pauls well I want someone to come out and drop kick the person that says it that's what I oh. want just absolutely <laughs> just decimate them like it's more cinematic and you just hear you just hear someone's intro music from wrestling. <laughs> they just come in. Da, 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 da. It's not more cinematic. Da, 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 da. It doesn't matter. Like something like that. Okay. Well, so yeah, I take issue with that. Cause you and a lot of other people have like been blasting them for that. I think it, it's not, they're not saying that 30 FPS is more cinematic than 60 FPS. I think even a brain dead individual knows that 60 FPS is more cinematic. What they're saying is they've done other things to the game to make it more cinematic, <laughs> and 30 FPS will allow them to implement that stuff. <laughs> I don't think that they're speak, speaking directly to the frame rate, saying that a, a more, a less good frame rate, a more, uh, blurry and 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 uh you know less clear frame rate is somehow more cinematic i think they're saying that they they were able to make the game more cinematic due to the sacrifice in the frame rate 
like that's, as a trade off. It's not that the frame rate makes it more cinematic. That's like doesn't. the most charitable read of it. That's like so. <laughs> it's like I guess eight, I, it seems like, like eight the obvious, <laughs> it's like eight. It seems like the obvious read to me, but I, my brain's <laughs> weird. So well, but more is relative. You know, thirty FPS is more cinematic. Oh yeah, totally. More, more well, cinematic all that than what? Anyway. <laughs> all that's list service anyway, right? Like we know, we know better. Chat, how you doing? I'm finally looking at chat, so if you've been roasting me, I wasn't reading it. All right, I'll be right back. Roast him up, chat. The jacket's the jacket plays though. I'll be right back. Fire Phil and booty and let Satya run it. No, let me and Lono run it. What are we talking about, guys? What are we talking about? Kirk with a different part of his hair. Job interview for Bethesda. I'm assuming the shirt says all pros, no hoes. Hell yeah. Kirk is rizzing us up. every. T I'm, I rizz you up every time I'm on here. What are you talking about? He raided Destin's closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best one. That's the best one so far. He raided... <laughs> He raided Destin's closet. I didn't even think about that. That's so good. Sorry, guys. My, my allergies are acting up. Uh, <clears throat> exclusive. WrestleMania looked cool, and I, I'm not even a, a huge uh, wrestling fan, and I thought it looked cool. The Decima engine has a question? What is the question? Guys, I'm sorry. My nose is killing me right now. FPS. What? Can you smell what Xbox is cooking? Who am I trying to impress? Guys, I'm just, it's a bit. It's a bit. Like, I'm, it's the graphic, black graphic tee blazer. Like, everybody knows that's like the E3. Come on, I'm bringing E3 back. It's a bit. Kirk Legary, I'm not trying to be Destin. No, you got, yeah, world premiere. You guys remember at E3 when everybody used to come out looking like this? Oh really? New uh, new free update to EA Sports PJ Tour. I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm excited about uh, getting on some PJ Tour, and I might cover Top Spin for my channel. I haven't decided. I really want to cover Harold Harold Halibut, um, but I don't think I'm gonna get a code for that. Your boy's not getting codes. The last code I got was for the Outlast Trials. And I'm reviewing that, and it's it's really good. I really like it. The more I like it, the more I play it. I like it more the more that I play it, which I feel like is is good for a game like that. That's a good sign. Kirk's camera is at 30 FPS because we want to make it very clear the it's difference. It's very cinematic. It's very cinematic. Well, people claim they can't tell the difference, but I mean, take your hand and put it up, Kirk. Right? We're not. Yeah, gonna, it's bad. And then I'm <laughs> dead. You just look to the side like you're forlorn. Okay. Is that Are... a new room massage parlor behind me? No. It's, I don't know, it just looks better than my wall, I feel like. <laughs> um, He's getting a pedicure. Is... He's getting a pedicure was... right now. Don't let him lie yeah. to you. I think Jazz was like, uh, how, how far am I in Ronin? I have not actually touched Ronin um, since. I came back on and we talked about it and since I did my guide I've been reviewing the Outlast Trials which again is a good game 
it's I, I DM'd Kirk. It's it's trending into too long territory. All right, it is for you again. We've got to we've got to take account of our own biases here. Like we want to move on and cover our other stuff. I think that would be great for the average consumer. No, but I'll also say this. I think certain gameplay loops lend themselves to the 25 hour mark, and when you get beyond it, I think the gameplay loop. It's like, I don't do know, I man. really want to do I, this for another 15 hours? Like 35 hours in the first map, and I, I loved it. So that, that I'm I, I'm just getting hitting that point where like, okay, it's time for the plane to land, and I don't think I'm anywhere close to the end of the game. Well, I don't at think 30 the game long suit is uh, is like narrative or any of that anyway. Um, so I don't know how much I'm like, oh, I can't. Does it like ramp up closer to like the third act where you're like, oh, I really want to know what happens in the story or. Because I was, I really am just invested in like getting to know the characters and doing all the side stuff. Really, you know, like that goofy quest. Did you do the goofy quest where like the inventor fakes his death with like the blowfish poison? Yeah, like, stuff like that is so great. Like I love that stuff, and it has nothing to do with the main story. Got to bring Doc Dark back on the stream. I mean, he's having to film his 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 videos in his car and in different rooms now. I think he's kind of scared for his life. You know, he's having to kind of. You know, I don't know. I don't know if we want to bring the heat here. Doc's Doc's got the Xbox crowd gunning for him. They they gun for me enough oh. as it is. Yeah. You know, they gun. He was for me doing he was doing everything in his car before though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. There's a link in chat. That's where we're headed. I need you to do me a favor though. Let's get nine more likes on this video. Get this video to 400. I need you to go over to the new video as well. When you get over there, dude, smash that like button. All right. Don't make me be out Lono here asking are, for likes when I'm on a stream Lono with Kirk. and I Kirk. are going to debate the future of Xbox in the boardroom. You don't want to miss it. I have no idea what this man is going to say. Some cockamamie scheme. He's probably going to run us into the ground. Okay, I'm here. I'm here to bring Xbox back to the glory days, all right? I've got the shirt. I've got the blazer. I'm not letting this man ruin <laughs> everything we've worked for. It's a new age of Xbox, okay? You don't want to miss it. You want to click that link in the chat. I'm going to redirect you guys. If redirect doesn't work, the link's in chat. It'll also be the featured video on the channel. All right, here we go. I'm going to be silent for like a couple seconds, and I'm going to go into it. Then I'm going to talk over his intro. Thanks so much for checking out. Another video where I sit down every Monday, and we pick a topic to talk with Kirk, and he's dressed up for the occasion because we're asking the question, what if I was the CEO of Xbox? There's been some... Ah. There's been some consternation, some frustration, some irritation about where the brand is going. You know, we're seeing exclusive cosmetics go to see if these on PS5. We're seeing probably more titles go to PS5. Hellblade 2 is at 30 FPS. It's just, it's never, it's never a great thing to have that much negativity about a brand. So we're like, okay, well, what would we do if we were in charge? We hope this is fun for you guys. Be sure to chime in chat. Be be sure to smash the like button as you come over. I'm going to end the previous stream about Gears of War. I was talking Gears 6. Kirk was in there a little bit, you know, and now he's in the hot seat with me. Gear 6 is one of our, our great initiatives that we have coming.